Okay, we have a very full agenda this evening. Great, thank you. Welcome to the, this is May, to the May Community Board 8 meeting. We have a bunch of new members, which I will introduce to you shortly, and uh, some departing members, but you already know that, and welcome to everybody. So the way the board meeting works is that the public will have an opportunity if you've already signed up, and if not, you need to sign up by 645 to speak for two minutes each on whatever issue you would like. After that, um, we will move into executive session. At that point, public members may only speak if they have a board member do it for them. So any more questions or comments will not be permitted without asking the board member. At the very end of the meeting, after the last item in the new business, we will have a super executive session, at which point everyone must exit the room other than full board members because we have a personnel issue to discuss, and that is confidential. So um, again, welcome everyone, and let's start with the public session. So I will call you up. There's a microphone over there, and if you line up three at a time, you'll have two minutes. Thank you. Daniel Grace, Marsha Henry, Awana Bed, and John Weiss. Are you guys here? Come on up to the mic. Over there. And please identify yourselves with your address because we're taping this. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Marcia Henry. I am a resident of Astoria. And I also have children who attend independent schools in Manhattan. I'm here on behalf of, the, of OANA, which is the old Astoria Neighborhood Association. And we wanted to voice our support for extending the ferry system from the Astoria um, stop over to the 90th Street stop. Um, the Old Neighborhood Association would like to reiterate its advocacy and express that's already been expressed to the New York City EDC in October 2018 for changing the origin landing on the Astoria ferry from Hallett's Cove, Astoria, to the Upper East Side of Manhattan. We feel that this extension of the route to the Upper East Side would create a positive economic effect to both areas. Each waterfront is about 1,500 feet apart, which is approximately five minutes in duration to transport the ferry and customers from one to the other. We wanna make sure we highlight some of the positives. Um, there's a Second Avenue subway access that's going to be uh, much easier to, for people to get to from the ferry. There's gonna be less cars on the streets. Access to the proposed Astoria Waterfront Arts District will also be a plus for us on the Astoria side. And there's tons of benefits, obviously, on the Manhattan side, um, including frequenting places like um, Ashwalk Green, which my kids do, they swim there a lot, and also other activities that I think we could take advantage of Astoria residents. And finally, we also don't think that the required, infra the required infrastructure already exists, and therefore there will be a very minimal cost, and they've already done their assessment to determine whether or not Astoria is a feasible place, because we already have a ferry system there, so that should also be quite easy for them to get past as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Daniel Grace for International Kitchen doing business as Hutch and Waldo, a small coffee shop located on 81st Street, uh, just off the corner of 2nd Avenue, the northwest corner. Um, we're here today for um, a second visit regarding an unenclosed sidewalk cafe. Um, basically, we were here last, or we were in the um, Street Life Committee meeting last uh, Tuesday, and a, an objection was raised as to uh, the barrier between the cafe itself and the street that it was gonna be a fixed bench scenario. Um, at that meeting, the members uh, respectfully requested that we update the design just to be a regular barrier of, you know, removable barrier, that it wouldn't be a fixed bench or anything like that. So we've gone back to the drawing board, literally, uh, got the architect to redesign the front of it. We've submitted it to the community board, and we're here to hopefully uh, get over that small issue we had last week. Other than that, it seemed like everything was fine. So. Um, Happy to take any questions if there are any, or just uh, leave it on submission. There will be a discussion because it will be a separate item in the Street Life Committee report. Thank you very much. 
Hi, my name is John Weiss. I live at 169 East 64th Street. This is not going to take anywhere near two minutes. I'm not another Democratic uh, candidate. <laughs> so, It'll be very short if you worry. Well, across, on 65th Street in the old Rockefeller House, they're planning on putting in a, uh, there's, a there's a new owner there, a greenhouse, which I'm fine with and everyone I've spoken to is fine with. But they're also going to do something like putting some very tall sh trees or shrubs on top of the thing which for a period of the day is gonna block sunlight going into my backyard and into several other houses' backyards. I'm not opposed to the greenhouse, but I don't want the trees there. We have a lot of things growing in our backyard and I have a couple of grandchildren who come over and I have a little play pool in the back and I really don't want it shaded. So I'm voting against that. Okay, That's thank it. you. That will be an item when the Landmarks Committee comes up. Okay, Derek Walsh and Shane Whelan, Eli Elizabeth, oh, Eliz Liz Daly, Rose Daly, and Eamon Hannafin. Next. Good evening. My name is Amy Hannafin, and I'm the sports program director at Asphalt Green. Uh, we're a nonprofit sports organization located on East 90th Street. I'm here in support of the expansion of the East River Ferry Service from Astoria, Queens, to the 90th Street Terminal. Asphalt Green's mission is to assist individuals of all ages and backgrounds achieve health through a lifetime of fitness and sports. Yearly, Asphalt Green serves 50,000 New Yorkers through free community programs, and are hopeful <laughs> and looking forward to the day when residents of Astoria and Western Queens can move easily and quickly access our facility. Likewise, our community will also benefit from accessing all that Astoria has to offer. On behalf of Asphalt Green, I am excited to, at the opportunity to expand our reach and impact the Astoria community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how do you do? Uh, what's up? Shane Wheel and Derek Walsh here on behalf of the uh, Hakoi LLC. Uh, we had a meeting last week with Street Life uh, in regards to, I guess, getting our liquor license. Everything really seemed to be approved. A uh, little area in the back was the garden area, and basically going over the paperwork for there. Um, my liquor attorney, who should be here momentarily, uh, has majority of that. Um, okay, that's, that's with the, the uh, certificate of occupancy question, is that right? Yes? Okay. So that's also being pulled out, right? So that's also being pulled out of the other approvals. It will be discussed separately. Yeah, I thought it would be discussed separately. We have okay. a certificate of occupancy already, I, but again, this is more technical for my uh, solicitor to be here. Okay. To understand it more. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Rose Daly. I'm the community relations manager at the Frick's. So I just want to let you know that in the back, I put out a brochure that has information on our upcoming, our current exhibits and uh, upcoming programs. So on the cover, you have um, a piece from uh, our Tieplo exhibition, which is from the lost frescoes at the uh, Palazzo a Quinto. We also have an exhibit of uh, full life portraits by uh, the Italian Renaissance painter Moroni. Uh, which will be up until uh, June 7th. And then <clears throat> we also have sketches by another uh, new uh, special exhibition of sketches by Whistler, as well as a um, starting on May 30th, uh, there'll be an installation by uh, the ceramist Edmund Duval. So, and also on Friday, June 5th, starting at six o'clock, um, we have our first Fridays when the museum admission is free after six o'clock in the evening. So these are out in the back on the table with the other items. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ellen Pallavi, Lenore Passavante, and Cotania Guard Guarducci, Felice's 83 restaurant. My name is Ellen Pallavi. I'm a former board member and, a pu and currently a public member of the Health Senior Social Services Committee. It's good to see you all. I'm glad to be here. 
Today, the board will be voting on supporting the New York Health Act. I urge you to vote yes. Why? Because this is a game changer, a real game changer and improvement to, for all of us. The New York Health Act, it's a significant overhaul to the broken healthcare system in New York. Single payer universal health care that pays for all needed health care for all New York residents. No co-pays or deductibles or out-of-pocket expenses. It includes more services than most, if not all current plans. Dental, hearing, vision, mental health, and, and I repeat, and long-term care. The cost that throws more families into poverty than any other medical cost. Our annual pers personal costs will be lower and give us more comprehensive coverage. It is projected to, say, to give our state substantial savings. Cost savings will be achieved by reduced administrative costs, a huge and stable risk pool, economies of scale, and a huge negotiating, negotiating block, larger than many countries with successful single-payer plans. We need to add our collective voices to this initiative because, no surprise, Big pharma and profit-making insurance companies that make money off our needs are poised against this and well-resourced to do it. Last week, our committee held a public hearing on the New York Health Act. We approved the resolution, we approved our resolution unanimously. Barbara Rutter wrote a four-page summary, a multi-page summary of the hearing. I urge you all to read it. It gives us specifics we don't have time to go into tonight. Thank, thank you, Ellen. Let's begin adopting this resolution and give our committee co-chair the go-ahead to speak in our name at the first ever New York public hearing on this topic being held in Albany on May 28th. Let's do it. We can make New York health a reality. Thank, thank you. Lenore? <coughs> Lenore, come on up. Hi, my name is Lenore Passavanti, and I live at 215 East 79th Street. I'm here, to, I'm here to talk about an approved curb cut in front of 211 East 79th Street, which is the Upper East Side Nursing Center. Um, last year, the residents of, of East 79th Street fought against that, and with CB8, we um, submitted a resolution to the DOB opposing the curb cut. The curb cut was to allow a car to drive onto the sidewalk and up to the front of the nursing home. We felt that would be a disruption of the pedestrian walkway of the way of life of the um, street and the residents and quality of life of the neighborhood and wouldn't do anything really for the patients in the nursing home. They um, can access the nursing home through a driveway and entry in the back if that was desired, but usually they just come in through an ambulette and they are uh, brought in through the front door, and that's been going on since 1969. Uh, fast forward to this year, the, the nursing home continued to um, apply for this, and they succeeded. DOB approved it. DOB approved it re uh, regardless of the CB8's objection and opposition to it, and also um, against in, in noncompliance with zoning um, resolution 26-15, which does not allow curb cuts on wide streets. The wide street, a wide street is 75 feet wide, 79th street is 100 feet wide. So the DOB has failed us. Um, the reason they don't want curb cuts on wide streets is of course the disruption to traffic. The curb cut is in a select bus lane. So I'm here today just to shed light on it. We're fighting it and we would like as much support as possible from our representatives in CB8, but just shedding light on the kind of problems that we have with um, DOB being um, cognizant and acting in the, you know, according to law. Thank, thank you. you. And Transportation Committee and Zoning Committee and the Board Office are all working on this, so thank you guys. Costanza? Yes. Hello, I'm Costanza on behalf of Felice 83rd, a restaurant on first. The I'm here on behalf of Felice 83rd, a restaurant on <coughs> First Avenue and 83rd. I believe last Tuesday someone raised a question about the outdoor cafe. Since then, although we are within the parameters of what the city has allowed us to have, I 
decided to push two tables together so that there would be more space for the pedestrian that complain about the tables. But as of today, we have received no complaints through 311. But nevertheless, I'm trying to make it easier for the people that are in the neighborhood to pass by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aldo Castro Ricardo, Brenda Levin, and Rosalind Farber. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Aldo Cano, and um, I'm community coordinator for Thrive uh, Mental Health First Aid Training. Uh, we're one of 54 uh, initiatives under Thrive NYC, and we're with the Department of Health. Uh, we've had a very successful year with CB8, uh, CB8 um, uh, headed by Lynn Strong, uh, who uh, brought uh, mental health first aid training to Roosevelt Island. Uh, we were at Carter Burden and we offered uh, many trainings. Uh, we're also coordinating trainings at the uh, public library there and with the emergency response team as well. Um, our training uh, uh, offers or teaches the skills to understand, identify, and assist those who show signs of mental health and substance misuse uh, challenges and crises. So this is a vital training. It's an amazing training. People who have taken the training are very uh, satisfied with this training. And we would love to continue uh, our partnership with CB8. Uh, if you belong to a community-based organization, if your business, if you're uh, part of a large organization and you're interested in having these trainings, these, are, these trainings are free. Uh, they're for all New Yorkers. Um, uh, please, uh, I'd be happy to assist in coordinating these trainings. We've been the, we bring the trainers to your site. Uh, it includes uh, text that is also offered for each um, uh, participant. So um, I will leave my information also with Andrew here at CB8 uh, so that uh, if you wish uh, to have a training, um, please reach out and uh, we would be happy to do that. Thank you. All right, thank I you know very it's much. mental health year. And thank you yes. so much, Lynn, for coordinating and organizing everything. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, I know you worked with David as well. So thank you. OK, Brenda. Good evening. My name is Brenda Levin. I'm a consultant to Extel Development Company. Gary Barnett, the founder and chairman, asked me to please read this note to the board members. It's addressed to Chair Camp, co-chairs Barbara Chalky and, and Edward Hartzog, co-chairs Elizabeth Ashby and Elaine Walsh, and members of the board. Thank you for having a special evening last night and for providing me with the opportunity to hear and respond to your concerns and suggestions for Extel's two CB8 projects, 86th and 1st and 79th and 1st. My team and I appreciated the large turnout of both board members and neighbors, particularly on such a cold, raining evening. The discussion was a good and productive exchange, and it was beneficial for Extel to hear both the board members and neighbors' concerns and ideas. The exchange will certainly inform the follow-up Chair Camp asked us to provide in one month to be continued, dot, dot, dot. Thank you, Gary Barnett. Um, I'm Rosalind Barber from the Public Theater, um, and we uh, have three venues, the Delacorte Theater um, uptown in Central Park, our flagship home, the Joe Pop Public Theater down in the East oh, Village. Oh, sure. Can you just kind of tip it up? Tip it up a little bit. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Great. Okay, um, and uh, I just wanted to come here today to let you all know we're starting free shakes here in the park uh, next week up at the Delacorte Theater. So as always, tickets are free and there are a variety of ways that you can access them through the line at the Delacorte Theater at Central Park, um, free distribution downtown uh, at the public, through our Today Ticks Lottery and through Borough Distributions. Um, we're performing Much Ado About Nothing this year and Coriolanus, um, both for five-week runs. 
and then we'll end our season with our public works pageant performance of Hercules. Um, so we are uh, an organization that's been around since 1962, and uh, the Delcourt Theater facility was built at that time. Um, and as you may have read in the fall, we're contemplating a renovation of that facility that will make the uh, free shakes here in the park a permanent fixture for all of you to enjoy for many years to come. We're really um, honored to have served over five million New Yorkers since uh, its uh, inception in 1962, and we look Look forward to serving many, many more, and mostly welcoming you all to our productions at the Bell Court and downtown. So that's there, there are flyers uh, on the tables out there with more information, and I look forward to seeing you all up there. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy Posner, Clifford Broker, Borker, Booker, and Trish in the East 80s. No last name. Hi, I'm Jeremy Posner. Uh, I live on East 83rd Street, uh, and I'm here to talk about um, traffic safety, traffic enforcement, and cyclist safety. Um, contrary to popular opinion, there are some cyclists who do follow the traffic laws. Um, I've been I've brought this up multiple times with Ben Kalos. I've brought it up I brought it up last week at the 19th Precinct Community Council meeting, and specifically brought up the issue of safety for cyclists riding in the bike lanes. Um, and protection from cars turning across the bike lanes. Um, it's particularly bad just north of the 59th Street Bridge. At the meeting last week, Sergeant Rodriguez acknowledged that the precinct is aware that 61st Street and 1st Avenue is a particularly dangerous intersection for cyclists. Um, two, a few days later, on Thursday last week, I was riding a bike in the bike lane at 61st and 1st when a car, without yielding, cut across the bike lane to turn, cutting me off. I slammed on my brakes. I dislocated my shoulder rather badly. As I was calling for 911, I requested the police and an ambulance. NYPD never even dispatched a unit to the call. The 19th Precinct sees this as not an accident because I didn't make contact with the car and because they never registered the 911 call. They are saying that they have no accountability to, re to find the person who did this. They are saying they have no accountability to do enforcement there, to do stepped up enforcement, even though they had already acknowledged it as a dangerous spot. We must redesign mixing zones in these bike lanes. They are an inherently dangerous place where cars turn across the bike lane. Drivers do not yield to cyclists there as a matter of routine. People get hurt, people are going to get killed if we don't fix this problem. And when the city and NYPD know that a place is unsafe, they must take action right away to alleviate the danger rather than waiting until somebody gets hurt. Thank you for letting us know. I hope your shoulder is better fast. And also they're redesigning all of the vehicle lanes, the pedestrian bike lanes by the Queensboro 59th Street Bridge. So you can look on our website and get some more information about what the plans are. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, um, how are you? I'm Cliff Brokaw, it's my wife Amanda. Um, our neighbor I think already spoke, so I, I think the one um, regarding the, um, the proposed uh, construction on 64th Street, on, or actually on 65th Street, uh, in the old Rockefeller mansion. And so if I should defer comments till the landmark Discussion. You could raise it or talk oh, about it. I can I can talk <laughs> down. Okay. Um, if is, is that better? Stooping is better. Um, so I can wait. I understand it's going to be a separate item, or I can give comments now. Whatever you prefer. No, now. You okay. Have a chance so I think the um, can, yeah, I'm very sympathetic to our neighbor's comment about um, shadows on his on his uh, on his backyard and his plantings and his in his in his pool. And I think we also understand um, our new neighbor is trying to shelter uh, the view of the house actually between our two houses that is an eyesore in the neighborhood so we are sympathetic to that i think we just would ask that uh, the architects drop a plan that's respectful to the neighbors and takes into consideration some of the comments that have been made around um, you know providing the shelter that they want from the view that they don't want to see which we understand and uh, blocking out the light um, to the uh, their neighbors in the uh, in the central courtyard around the uh, the garden. So I think trying to balance that, I think, would be great. Um, and my wife probably will have more comments than I do. So let me give her. Let me give her okay. thirty seconds. Speak <laughs> fast. Um, yeah, you know, this this is a landmark, beautiful home with a rich history, and we've had the pleasure of of enjoying the view of the back of it uh, since we moved in. Um, there are two beautiful birch trees that 
probably are over 100 years old that are going to be taken down, um, which is, I guess is right, but it is a real shame. Um, and the proposal is for a very dense, basically almost thicket of holly trees um, that will grow to about, they can grow to be 25 feet high and will block all of the light that we currently enjoy. Um, do I get a little time since my husband spoke? Okay, uh, no, I'll be quick. Well, um, you, okay, well, it's you, it's, you know it's, what? If you could have signed up, so you get an extra. Minute, I did sign that? up actually. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay, then you get your two minutes. Okay, or a minute you. and a half. Um, I'll I'll be quick because I'm okay. sure. This thank is, you. This sounds like a luxury problem, um, but the the real I think problem um, that is generate that has generated this issue is um, our neighboring house at 173 East 64th Street. Um, the house has been abandoned for some time. Um, the city evicted um, the, the owner of the home. Um, she's, she's known to have severe mental illness and a lot of problems. Um, when they evicted her, they had to get men in hazmat suits in the house for three days to clean it out. Um, there are wires hanging all over the back of the house. Um, there is a bay window that is so rotted, I'm waiting for a, a storm to knock it to the ground. And there are now rats running in and out um, that we've seen in front of the house. And um, I think that the gentleman who is building this wall of trees is really doing so because he doesn't want to look at this house that is next to ours that, that we also find very <coughs> frustrating to live next to. Um, so I think there's, it's a two-part problem. Um, you know, the, the Block Association and the city have addressed um, the resident by evicting her from her home, um, but apparently she still pays taxes on the property, so nothing is being done about the other issues. Can you leave your contact information at the desk outside and someone will get in touch about, I think, maybe the other property, but thank you for your comments thank on the you. trees. Um, Trish, is Trish here? East 80s. Michael Ferrari and Wendy Baraschieve or Baraschieri? If I, if I massacre names, please forgive me. Good evening. My name is Michael Ferrari. I'm the attorney for Hatkoy LLC, which is applying for a liquor license at uh, 404 East 64th Street. I believe you heard earlier from Derek Walsh, uh, one of the principals. Um, my uh, clients and I appeared before the committee a week ago, and I'm not going to speak for the committee, but um, in, my, uh, in my view, it was a very warm uh, reception. I, th I, I got the sense that they were uh, impressed by uh, Derek's uh, experience and his partner's experience. I got the sense that there, was, there were no issues with the intended uh, use of, this, of the interior space as a restaurant and, and a, a, member of the, uh, a, a member of the board who's not a member of the committee was there and, and spoke highly of, of our application and, and she was hoping that uh, we would fill the space. Um, as I understood, one, uh, one of the committee members, there was a complaint about the, or a concern about the use of the backyard. Uh, there's been a license there for some 20 years, I believe, I may be, uh, a few years off, but uh, for most of those years, the backyard has been used and has been licensed by the uh, Liquor Authority for that use. Um, I've consulted all this past week with architects uh, who have explained to me that it is not necessary, as one of the committee members suggested, that uh, we apply for uh, an amended certificate of occupancy, but that uh, if we apply uh, or submit an alt alteration to, an alt to application to renovate the space with, and, and demonstrate to the uh, Department, of, Department of Buildings the, that there is a safe egress from the backyard, that will be acceptable to the Department of Buildings, that will be acceptable to the State Liquor Authority. Uh, I urge you to vote in favor of this application for the interior and the exterior. Uh, we will stick around to answer any questions as necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Is Wendy here? Okay. I think it's my handwriting and not your and not your vision of <laughs> it. It's you. Ravish here. Um, as you know, I've been in front of many of the community board eight meetings talking about climate change and development in our area, and um, we 
would like to be able to look forward to a time when we have uh, zero energy buildings, that is e uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy working together uh, as being mandated because if it's voluntary, I would very well understand that from a business point of view, it doesn't make sense to have to invest in technology that's completely not necessary, but legislatively we can make that necessary and meet our commitment to counter climate change and reduce by 80% within the next year or two if we are very aggressive about requiring more sophisticated uh, uh, measures than are currently uh, required under LEADS, which is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, which was designed by the NRDC, the National Resource Defense Council, in uh, about 1993 and worked really well for then, but we have new and urgent needs, and so I'm hoping that um, we can gather good minds together and do some data-based work and come out with some reasonable suggestions for legislative initiatives. We're moving into the executive session of the community board. So once again, if the public, if any member of the public would like to speak, you have to find a board member. That's why they sit in the first three rows and ask them to express your concern or ask your question on your behalf. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is adopted. Is there any amendment or correction to the minutes from April? Okay, then the... the Chuck? In the proposed tabulation sheet, it's where a couple of us are not voting for cause. It says yes and then not voting for cause. Get rid of these. So, it's first, why? Thank you for pointing that out. Once those are made, then the minutes will be adopted. Okay. Um, Let's have the public elected official representatives come up. I know that I saw some of you in the audience, and I would ask you, we do have a lot of committee reports, so please be cognizant of the time you have. Oh, Deputy Borough President? Oh, Aldrin, hi. I didn't see you over there. Well, we have the Deputy Borough President. He gets to go first. <laughs> you can come up here if you'd like. Or whatever, wherever you're comfortable. We defer to you. Good evening, Community Board 8. It's good to be here. Um, I hope you've gotten to meet some of your new board members. No. We've appointed uh, seven new board members to Community Board 8, and uh, I hope they're here. So They are uh, here. They're in the front row. I met with all of them except for one, and we had a lengthy phone conversation. We are very happy. When it comes to my report, I will introduce all of them okay, individually. Okay, that's good. So you, you just took care of that part for me. So I just want to also mention that we have a community board reception under the whale in the American Museum of Natural History on Wednesday, May 29th at 6 p.m. Um, we hope that you can all join us. Uh, you're also able to RSVP for plus one, and all community board staff are also welcome. It's going to be a networking event, even though it says training. It's really a networking event. I also, like many of you know, that Luisa Lopez has moved on to be uh, chief of staff uh, to Councilwoman Diana Ayala. As you know, most community liaisons go on to be district managers or chiefs of staff. She chose to go on to the chief of staff route. But uh, uh, lucky for us, we've hired a new community liaison for Community Board 8. Community uh, Board 8, uh, the new liaison um, for Community Board 8 and Community Board 11, the same board as the Luisa Lopez had, is Yolanda Rodriguez, who's here. So we want to welcome her. She's going to give a, a quick, brief announcement. Uh, I want to thank Community Board 8 for, having, uh, for being so nimble in terms of being proactive for issues that crop up that are timely, particularly the voting reform task force that you have, as well as the census task force. I mean, you guys were really early on on, the, on these two big, huge, important issues, uh, even before the borough president's office in terms of the census. Uh, we, we're we're going to form a complete count committee uh, next month and we'll make sure to send out an invitation to everyone in that regard. Uh, I want to thank your chair, uh, Lida Kemp, for joining us uh, last week for a tour of Pratt Industries. And uh, uh, it was a very good tour. And I'm, you, you're probably mentioning your report. I will. But, all right, so I'll skip that as well. Uh, uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to turn it to Yolanda Rodriguez, who's going to give a quick brief uh, update on some other items. Thank you. 
Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Yolanda Rodriguez, the newly appointed community liaison with Gail, Manhattan Bill President Gail Brewer's office. Could you speak a little louder? Is please? it better? Yes. Okay. So I'm Yolanda Rodriguez, the newly appointed community liaison with Manhattan Bureau President Gail Brewer's office. Thank you, and good evening to all. Um, so I'd just like to um, just run down some items, um, uh, as well as um, just kind of let you know that I'm here for you. You know, I used to be a, a resident uh, of the Upper West Side on East 86th and 1st. So I'm somewhat aware of some of the issues that, and items that you're dealing with. So I hope to be of assistance to all of you. Okay. So I'd like to start by welcoming all of the new appointees to the board. Welcome. And I hope to be meeting each and every one of you at some point in the near future. And I wish you all the best. So I'd like to start by talking a little bit about the Queensboro Oval. Um, the information that I received uh, about the recent May 6th public hearing at Franchise and Concession Review, uh, 15 individuals testified with Community Board 8 testifying who opposed the renewal because, as you know, open space is sorely needed in the community. Gail supported the renewal because changes were being made to the concession to make the tennis oval more accessible and affordable. So uh, I'd like to read some of those um, pluses that came out of that. Um, York T Avenue Tennis uh, will provide the public with a 22-week 20, uh, 20, 20 summer session. Uh, this means that there's an 83% increase from the 12-week session, summer sessions that were off offered in 2017 and 2018. In addition, six of the facility, eight tennis courts will be exclusively available to New York City Parks permit holders. Also, there are uh, the two other tennis courts during the summer session will be primarily used for fee-based instructional clinics uh, by York Avenue Tennis, but uh, during designated times. They will also be used for free peewee, junior, and senior instructional clinics. And also wanted to mention that Gail signed onto a letter with all the elected representatives of this board asking that the revenues from the Queensboro Oval be reinvested into CB8 parks, which is a great thing. I'd like to continue. Uh, I know Aldrin mentioned the CB uh, community board reception on Wednesday, May 29th at 6 p.m. I welcome you all to attend. Uh, it's a great opportunity to mix and mingle with other community board members from across the borough. This coming Monday, May 20th at 6 p.m. is the opening reception for our art gallery show uh, in recognition of Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. We are featuring a wonderful um, Korean artist group and we'll have light refreshments as well. On May 28th, there's an iftar dinner and location and details will come on that event as soon as we know. Um, on June 1st, our office is sponsoring this year's final My, Keep, My Brother's Keeper event at the amphitheater at, in, in Marcus Garvey Park. It's an event that's open to the public and will feature many community organizations that provide services and opportunities to young people. The My Brother's Keeper initiative seeks to level the playing field for young men of color in our educational system. Also coming up in June is the Pride Celebration, which will be a, a Vogue Ball on Friday, June 14th at 6 p.m. at the Alhambra Ballroom on 126th Street. And also, um, Make, New Make Music New York is offering an, an evening of free music open to the public. Uh, we hold an event in Carl Schutz Park on the promenade and we have refreshments. This is on Friday, June 21st at 5 p.m. And I believe that's all for now. So I, I hope to be meeting each and every one of you soon, and thank you for your time. We're very happy to have you. Welcome, and thank you. OK, the rest of the elected official representatives, and please, we do have a full agenda. If you could keep it to two minutes, those online could formulate your two minutes. 
statement. Thank uh, you. Uh, Vice Chair. Hi, I'm Shelby Garner from Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney's office. I have a couple updates. Uh, first, you may have noticed the Congresswoman wearing a firefighter's jacket for the past couple months. She has vowed to wear it until there's full funding for the Victims' Compensation Fund uh, for residents, first responders, and other people uh, affected by the September 11th attacks. Uh, that bill has a hearing in the House on uh, June 11th, so we're hopeful that that's going to continue moving forward. Uh, secondly, the Congresswoman has a bill on shell corporations to require them to disclose the beneficial ownership. Uh, this is important uh, for uh, Homeland Security and law enforcement purposes, but this is also in New York City a matter of affordable housing because a lot of these corporations are being used to buy up apartment stocks in New York and no one knows if those are individuals, if they're being used as pied -a terres or if they're being bought by hedge funds to have as a, uh, as a stable um, uh, investment. Uh, thirdly, uh, the Equality Act uh, will be voted on in the House this Friday, it looks like. Uh, that's an incredibly important piece of legislation that would protect individuals um, from an employment discrimination based on gender and sexual orientation. Um, and the Congresswoman is very supportive of that bill. Um, and finally, uh, also I wanted to mention in, in regards to uh, the ferry um, from Astoria, the Astoria line, extending that to the 90th Street Pier. Uh, we'd like to see some more information about the cost about that and exactly you know, what the schedule would entail. But the Congresswoman is supportive of that, that uh, plan and uh, that would uh, link up Roosevelt Island on the ferries to the Upper East Side and also Astoria. These are all parts of the Congresswoman's district and she has been supportive of the ferry service and has gotten federal funding to subsidize that on the, the city level. And finally, while we have been sitting here, uh, Alabama's uh, abortion law was signed by the governor. This bill uh, would uh, give uh, doctors up to 99 years in jail for performing an abortion uh, with no exceptions uh, for uh, rape or incest. Um, this is a horrific bill, and the Congresswoman uh, was very much hoping the governor would not sign this, uh, but this only shows the importance of codifying Roe v. Wade in law uh, on the state levels, but also federal protections, and she's going to continue to fight for a, a woman's right to choose. Um, and so that's not the happiest news, um, but the Congresswoman is going to continue fighting on that issue. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jenna Klaus from Councilmember Keith Power's office. Um, we got the results of participatory budgeting in last week and I just wanna let you know what items won. So we have new tr tree planting and tree guards, Wagner Middle School is getting new bathrooms, we're getting bus stop countdown clocks, tech upgrades for libraries and tech upgrades for schools. So thank you to those who voted in that. Um, for some legislative stuff, as a part of the speaker's greater package of legislation for tenant protections, Council Member Powers passed legislation last week that targets bad landlords who are harassing their tenants by means of construction. So if landlords now under this legislation, if landlords are caught lying about the occupancy of their buildings um, on construction permit applications, they will be denied uh, permits for an entire year. Um, so this legislation protects tenants from landlord harassment. Um, he, Council Member Powers is also co-sponsor of a resolution calling on the state legislature to pass the New York Health Act, which I know the board is voting on tonight. And then um, just a little bit about Lenox Hill Hospital. So as you know, they began their community outreach process here at the board. Um, at the Zoning and Development Committee, and then since then, Council Member Powers has been speaking with a lot of residents of the area to hear concerns. Uh, the top priority moving forward is seeking community feedback. Um, we're meeting with block associations, neighborhood associations, individuals, anybody who wants to share their concerns, their opinions, things they want the council member to know. Um, please contact me if you have any questions about it, and I. I'm going to be at the Yorkville Library tomorrow from 12 to 2. So that would be a great opportunity to come talk to me about Lenox Hall Hospital. All right, thank you.
Shell, are you talking about Carolyn Maloney's bill? I I don't know where the council member stands on that. I'm not familiar. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike with Senator Kruger's office. Senator Kruger sends her apologies. She uh, wanted to be here tonight. Um, but she's on her way home from Albany at the moment. Um, I'm hoping uh, she'll be able to visit sometime soon. Um, so there's a little over a month remaining in the legislative session. It runs from January to June, and the top issue uh, for Senator Kruger uh, for the rest of session is uh, rent regulation. Um, as we know, uh, we have a large number of residents on the Upper East Side that live in rent-stabilized and rent-controlled uh, apartments, and these are uh, often some of our most vulnerable neighbors. Uh, they're, it's the top issue, uh, landlord-tenant issues, and uh, with people in, in rent-stabilized apartments, the top issue that we get uh, coming to our, our uh, office from constituents. Um, and rent regulation gives renters a level of uh, housing stability and security that they would otherwise lack, um, allows residents to stay uh, in their neighborhood for uh, extended period of time and supports economic diversity in the community. Um, and so there's a suite of bills that Senator Kruger supports um, and that I believe the uh, board will be uh, considering later on. Um, they were uh, recommend or taken up and, and recommended by uh, the housing committee uh, this month. Um, and uh, those bills are also described in detail in our uh, this month's um, community bulletin, which I encourage you, if you haven't already picked up, to pick up and read. Um, and then finally, uh, our offices, the Senator's uh, Boomers and Seniors Roundtable Series um, has now wrapped up, but we are planning a, uh, a three-part later life planning series of informational uh, events on uh, planning for later life issues. Um, the first is on June 3rd, which is a presentation discussion Q&A about all things Medicare, um, and we've done this in the past, and it's generated a lot of issue, a lot of interest. So, uh, spread the word. Uh, there's a flyer outside. Uh, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jack from Assemblymember C Rights Office. Um, I just have a few quick things. Uh, the Assemblymember today actually passed a piece of legislation that um, requires more specific labeling of electronic bicycles to make sure that um, the consumer is aware of what the, 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 le uh, I'm sorry, the legality of um, different, uh, different electronic bikes and you know, their speed and whatnot to help you know, ease that concern uh, that I know is here in the district. Um, as Mike has said, that um, the assembly member is also working hard on the rent regulation laws with her assembly colleagues. Um, and those are some of the legislative updates. We also have a lot of upcoming events. Um, on this coming Monday, we have um, an East Side World War I Centennial Committee uh, Coming Home Symposium at um, the Roosevelt House. That's from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, it's kind of the tail end of our World War I events. Um, and we also have um, the Department of Finance coming into our office to help individuals with um, both renting and homeowning uh, tax exemptions and rent freeze programs. Um, that's happening this Friday, May 17th, and then again on Friday, June 14th. And that's it for me. Hi, uh, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Terrell Brock, and I'm a community liaison from State Senator Jose Serrano's office. I uh, hope we're all doing well tonight, and uh, I'll keep it uh, short and sweet. Uh, in April, our off-site constituent hours were dedicated to environmental awareness. We partnered with Grow NYC and the Department of Environmental Conservation, who provided information on, New York, on how New Yorkers can lead healthier, more environmentally uh, healthier, more environmentally sustainable lives. And this month, our off-site constituent hours will focus on women's empowerment and gender equality. We'll be partnering with the New York City Commission on Human Rights and the Bronx Neighborhood Health Action Center. We'll, we'll also be joined by representatives from the uh, U.S. Census Bureau 
who will be uh, providing uh, and sharing information on the 2020 cens census, and also uh, job uh, opportunities ranging from uh, 20 to uh, uh, $27 an hour. And for a schedule of our upcoming off-site constituent hours, please see uh, the calendar and report outside on the table. And if you're unable to attend uh, uh, any, any of our scheduled off-site constituent hours, please stop by our district office, call us at 212-828-5829, or, or, or email us at serrano at nysenate.gov with any uh, questions, comments, or concerns. And if anyone would like to reach out to me, my uh, email is tbrock at nysenate.gov at nysenate.gov. Uh, any questions? Okay, great. Uh, have a good evening, everyone. Thank Bye. you very much. No problem. Hi, my name is Victoria from Assemblymember Court's office. And before I start, I wanted to let everyone know that this will be my last uh, board meeting. I am moving to Austin at the end of the month, so I will obviously not be with Assembly Member Court any longer. Um, they have hired my replacement. Her name is Rebecca, and she should be at the next full board meeting, so you'll get to meet her then. Um, so I'll keep this short. Assembly Member Court is a co sponsor of the Trust Act, which would enable Congress to request President Trump's state tax returns. And he is also supporting the package of legislation that would support and expand rent regulation laws, which Mike talked about earlier. Um, and it includes prohibiting evictions without good cause, expanding the Emergency Tenant Protection Act, and ending rent hikes for major capital improvements. And that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, there's a question from oh. Ed. Does he support all nine of Yes, he all does. Nine. All nine, yeah, all nine. All nine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, have a great time in Austin. Yeah, and thank you for everything. Thank you. I have a few things. I'd like to, whoops, I need my list so I don't get anyone wrong. I'd like to welcome the seven new board members sitting in the front row. I'm going to introduce you by name and then if you want to stand up just so everyone gets to recognize you and know who you are. We have Lex Avinshan, is that correct? And if I mispronounce, please correct me. Is that good? Good. Okay. I told you we like libraries. Okay. Vanessa Aronson. Lowell Barton. Lowell was on the board a while ago, so he's back, couldn't stay away. Rebecca Dangor, is that correct? Great. Hi, Rebecca. Paul Higgins. Greg Morris. And Jack Zimmerman. I have been slow in appointing mentors, but I will try and get to it in the next couple of days. And I thank everyone for volunteering. I did meet with all of the new board members, answered all of their questions, and you know that the office and I are available at all times. Maybe not so much in the middle of the night, or you'll, you'll see from my emails that I am up in the middle of the night. And, um, but we are all available, as well as your mentors. So welcome, and I hope you have a great time here. Um, yes. Yes, Will, you're going to get a list, right? Good, okay. All right, um, Greg Kirschenbaum had a baby. Greg, are you here? A little boy, Theodore Grand, a cute little baby. Okay, um, the Women and Families Committee is having a forum in June, on June 13th at the Metropolitan Museum at 6.30 on sexual harassment in the workplace. They gathered together a great, a great panel. They have uh, District Attorney Cy Vance, Deputy Director of the New York City Commission on Human Rights, Dana Sussman, and a CUNY law professor, Rick Rossine. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. We always encourage board members to attend the forums because they, um, they are, P the panelists like having an audience there and the board committee chairs who are sponsoring and participating like to see the support of the board members. So I urge everyone to attend. I know for Barbara's on, um, on the uh, Single Payer Act, there were a number of board members and it's very much appreciated. I'd also like to point out that Dory, a member of the Small Business Committee and obviously an artist, worked on the flyer for the Women and Families Committee and did a great job. And Will, as he always does, gathered together an outstanding range of sponsors. I'd like to invite everyone 
everyone to the anti-hate forum that CB6 is putting on because we are a sponsor. That's May 20th. And they also have an interesting panel of people. Um, the location is on the board website. Um, Barbara Ryder's panel was very well attended and very successful, and she'll fill you in and did a very thorough job on the minutes, but I just wanted to point out that um, it was a very successful event. Um, the, the paper recycling that Aldrin was referring to, so they invited the board chairs and district managers to go on a tour of this terrific paper recycling plant in Staten Island, right? I never knew. But they make all of the boxes that Home Depot uses, that um, Amazon uses at this facility. It's completely closed loop, including recycling the water that they use. And it was really fascinating to see. They are having a contest for the community boards. We're only competing against ourselves. Whichever board has the greatest greatest increase in paper recycling per quarter gets a cash prize, I think, to be used as grants. Um, the information will be coming from Will. So let's gather up all our pizza boxes, which actually are recyclable, even with grease. I didn't know that. And, um, and stack them up. I, I'm saving all my paper shredding at home for this event. And it is, it, it is just, it's not open to the public. I asked if they would be part of Open House New York, but it's a, apparently a dangerous thing to go to. They're worried about people who don't know falling. I'm not, I don't like heights. And it was a catwalk with that see-through metal looking down over the torrential water below, not my favorite part of it, but the whole thing is really, is really very interesting. I won't take up more of your time on this. Um, I did testify about the Queensboro Oval along with Trisha. Barry submitted written testimony, and we were quite disappointed that it looks like the Queensboro Oval will be given a 10-year RFP for year-round use. Um, and I think, oh, I'd like to encourage, again, all committee chairs to please provide your minutes as soon as possible. When I was meeting with the new board members, they asked about having information in advance of the board meetings, and I, I um, asked them, they told them they could look at the website, but not everything is up there as quickly as it could be. So please, if you could get it in, that would be great. Um, the Census Committee, Lorraine or Rebecca, I hope that there is time, will be able to, to address that. And it's a really urgent matter because obviously it will be over in next year and we want to get all of the money that we can. So that's it for my report, Will. I'll be very, very quick since you'll hear from me again at the end of the meeting. Um, I wanted to thank all of the board members who volunteered to come out to the street fair this last weekend. Oh, yes, um, I was going so, so extra thank you uh, from both of us and, and even some of our new board members who came out. Uh, we really appreciate it. There will be another street fair in June, June 8th. Uh, if you have that weekend available, we would love for you to come and join us on the street. Day. Yeah, just, just the one day, just the afternoon. Uh, you can sign up for like an hour and a half shift. It's, it's very easy, very lovely. You get to meet constituents. You get to meet uh, everybody in the neighborhood and hear about their problems. And it's a great way to, to stay informed. Um, so just thank you to everyone who came. And then uh, outside, I just wanted to flag these. The, uh, these are two cards that came from last night's meeting uh, about Extel. Uh, they're uh, contact cards for the construction sites. Um, so I just wanted to flag them for everyone. And you'll hear from me again at the end of the meeting. So thank you. Oh, right. I, I did want to say for new business, we have one potential resolution that I'd like to bring to everyone's attention, and it's kind of a, a repetition of last year, but there's new legislation. And also, as I mentioned, there will be the the private private executive session on that, so don't put your coats on till the end. Um, okay, Abraham, would you come on up for street lights? Okay, so for Street Life, on your minutes, all of the items on the minutes listed were unanimous approvals. Um, do I have a motion to take all of those together? Or, or does anyone want to pull any specific items of these unanimous ones out separately? Noting, I, I, I do have one separate item that we do have to vote on, but I'm asking for these unanimous ones here. Okay, then cause motion. To take them all, to, to take them all together. Okay, all in favor, Marco. You remove the um, application 406E, 64th Street. This approved. W which letter is this? Uh, this is the D. 2D or 3D? D, as in David. Okay. Is it in the section two? I don't know which section. Yes, section two. Section two. E 
406. 406. Okay, so you're asking to pull out 3D. Yes. Okay. Okay, so then all of the unanimous except for 3D that is listed in your minutes, I'm being I'm asking to take all together. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Okay, great. Call the roll on all of them except for 3D listed in the minutes. Okay, Abinson. Yes, uh, Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartsog. Hartsog. Yes. Helpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Yes. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamort. Mason. Morris? Yes. Newman? Yes. Marshall? Patch? Yes. Hope Marshall? Yes. Popper? Yes. Price? Yes. Rudder? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Shimamora? Yes. Spagnoletti? Yes. Squire? Strong Shinazaki? Yes. Tamayo? Yes. Teitelbaum? Yes. Tejo? Yes. Thiever? Yes. Wald? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Warren? Yes. Wiener? Yes. Zimmerman? Yes. Okay, while those votes are being counted, I'm going to uh, bring up item 2D as in David. This is International Kitchen LLC, DBA Hutch and Waldo. Uh, this application appeared before us at the Street Life Committee on Tuesday. Uh, however, we did not take a position at that time as the applicant we had asked uh, and the applicant had asked to uh, resubmit uh, the plans based on some concerns that we had. So I'm gonna present some of the information that I have and then I'm gonna see if there's anyone with a motion on this item. Um, so this is an application for Sidewalk Cafe. Uh, one of the concerns voiced at the Street Life Committee was that they had a, a you'll see, we also have pictures in, the, um, in your tablet. So you can see there was a large, effectively bulkhead that was a concern of ours in terms of blocking the creating a barrier, which we asked them to remove, uh, and in the revised plans, the applicant did. However, another thing that was raised, uh, that was brought to my attention by David Rosenstein, uh, was that the venue has been, or we have photos that the venue had been operating uh, the Sidewalk Cafe prior to coming to us with a license. Uh, if you look at, in the packet, there is a photo from 2018 where there is a Sidewalk Cafe, even though it was unlicensed. Uh, I also raised at the Street Lab Committee that this venue had been uh, issued a violation from DCA for operating an unlicensed sidewalk cafe. Um, and that's, that's the information I have. Uh, Marco, do you want to add any context or color? I think I just talked to the uh, owner. Thank you. Thank you. I just talked to the owner, and he said that he removed the uh, fixed enclosure and is going to uh, use the regular railing. And also, since he applied for the sidewalk cafe, I think he tried to correct what he's doing wrong. And I do not have objections in that application. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh yeah, R Rita. According to Dave, and I, I'm just channeling him, is that in last year in 2018, uh, this particular establishment put up six tables and 12 chairs outside without filing for an application with us. This year, before they filed for an application, they put up these almost huge barriers which are in your pack, your tablets. Granting them an approval means that our applications mean nothing. And so therefore, I hope that we vote to disapprove this application. Thank you, Rita. Do I have any other? Barbara? They Correct, and the most recent revived plans are taking down the barrier. They've now come before us with the application uh, they were issued a, a, a violation, and now that's corrected, and they've come to us with a, a new plan that is uh, acceptable. Okay. Elaine? Well, the question. There is no motion. There is no motion at the moment. I make a motion to approve the application. Second. Okay. okay. So uh, 
All in favor? Aye. Call the question. Okay, okay. Evanson. Yes. This is to approve. Yes. Yes. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Day. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. No. Chalky. No. Dangor. No. Freeland. Yes. Hartzog. Yes. Helpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Pass. King. Pass. Kirschenbaum. Uh, later. Yes. Lamort. Mason. No. Morris. Yes. Newman. Pass. Partial. Patch. Upstate. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. No. Price. No. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. No. Schneider. Yes. Shimamura. Yes. Spagnoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Yes. Thiever. Yes. Wald. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Warren. No. Wiener. No. Zimmerman. No. Okay, let's see who passed. Um, Hartzog. Abstain. Uh, Johnson. King. Yes. All right. Lamort, not here. Newman. Yes. <coughs> uh, Partial, not here. Um, did anyone else pass? Did I miss anybody? Right. Yes. Okay, while that's being tabulated, the other item that was asked to be pulled out is item 3D as in David. This is Hapcoit LLC, uh, DBA pending 406 E64. This is a new application for liquor, wine, and beer. The committee did unanimously approve it. Uh, however, Marco uh, asked to call it out, so I will ask Marco to speak on this one. Uh, our intention was to approve the application and disapprove the use of the RIA yard. And uh, today, the, applica the applicant, the attorney, he said that he was uh, having an advice from a professional architect who's, uh, who recommend that just file an alteration too, and that will be okay. In addition, he said that for the last 20 years, he has been using the rear yard. I had to mention this one. It's very important that this place is located in R8. It's a residential district. However, they obtain a legal CEO, and therefore is a grandfather. Now, what he's proposing is to increase the grandfather, one, two, and in order to use the rear yard, he has to file for a new CEO, and then they can have the right to use the rear part. Why is the problem of the rear yard? The problem of the rear yard, I, I'm not going to go deeper, but one of the issues is the means of egress. The second uh, part is in the event that there is fire on the rear yard, and the residents that live above, they have the fire escape in the rear part. And those uh, residents, in order to go down, it will be too late for them to escape of this problem. So it's extremely dangerous to uh, approve or, or recommend to approve the use of the rear yard. And as, as I said before, this application is in a residential district. However, they have a CEO, so that means he has a grandfather. And I do not have a problem to uh, use as a restaurant, but I do have a problem to use the rear yard. Thank you. No, I don't know, but it was used, they have a CEO. Because it's BSA variance and they want to amend the variance. Yeah. Barry? This space used to be called Muggs, and that's more than 25 years. It was used at the rear yard, was used. The current, or the most recent uh, uh, owner of the space enclosed the rear yard, so that is that issue is somewhat uh, moot. It's, it was called Fatty Fish, and his neighbor to the east was John's Pizzeria, John's Obliga Street, and they haven't done that. They do have a means of egress between the two parcels, there's a door, be, be, in the fence between them, so that if there's a fire in one uh, one of these two sites, the, those people can go to the other site. And it's been there, those, both rear yards have been used for perhaps 30 or 40 years. So I think we ought to uh, listen to the applicant. He's going to uh, make a, a modification to the site. I think we should approve the application. 
Chuck, call the question. Okay, this, this was a motion to approve, so all in favor? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Then call the roll on the approval for 3D. Abinson? Yes. Aronson? Yes. Ashby? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Barton? Yes. Brown? This is to approve. Go ahead. This is to approve. This is to approve without the extension of the backyard? No, with the extension of the backyard. This is to approve with the stipulations that are in the resolution from the committee, which was also that they will not operate uh, until they have the provided the documentation and also with the hour restrictions that we agreed at the meeting. Yes. Camp? Yes. Chalky? Yes. Dangor? Yes. Freeland? Yes. Hartzog? Yes. Helpern? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Johnson? Yes. King? Yes. Kirschenbaum? Later? Yes. Uh, Lamort? Mason? Yes. Morris? Yes. Newman? Parshall? Oh, sorry, yes. Partial, Patch, yes. Pope Marshall, yes. Popper, yes. Price, yes. Rudder, yes. Salcedo, yes. Sanchez, yes. Schneider, yes. Shimomura, yes. Spagnoletti, yes. Squire, Strong Shinazaki, yes. Tamayo, yes. Tettlebaum, yes. Tejo, yes. Thiever, <coughs> uh, Thiever, yes. Wald, Stay. Walsh, yes. Warren, yes. Wiener? Yes. Zimmerman? Yes. Okay, on the unanimous ones, there were 39 yeses, no noes. On the Waldo and Hutch with the outdoor cafe, 26 yeses, 10 noes, three abstentions, and zero not voting for cause. Okay, while Will is doing whatever magic he does with this, <laughs> let's, have, let's have the Voting Reform Task Force. Do you want it? You can come up if you prefer. I, I don't know. It's, it's well, whatever you want. This is a okay. newly reconstituted um, task force, and what we decided to do since Albany passed all the voting reforms that we thought we were going to be working for is to try to facilitate and improve the voting experience. So we have three resolutions, all have been passed unanimously, and I what, seek approval to vote on them yeah. together? Or? Okay. 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 Do you have any questions? I do have a question. Would this be that every Okay. Sorry. Out of order. Sorry. Corporal Miller. Abinson. Yes. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartzog. Yes. Helpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Yes. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later, yeah. Moore, Mason, Stain, <coughs> Morris, yes, Newman, yes, Partial, Patch, yes, Pope Marshall, yes, Popper, Popper, Rita, yes, Rita, <laughs> Price, yes, Rudder, yes, Salcedo, yes, Sanchez, yes. Schneider, yes, Shimomura, yes, Spagnoletti, yes, Squire, Strong Shinazaki, yes, Tamayo, yes. Tetelbaum? Yes. Tejo? Yes. Fever? Yes. Wald? Yes. Walsh? She uh, Warren? Yes. Wiener? Yes. Zimmerman? Yes. Okay. okay, on the last street life item about the outdoor cafe in the back, I mean the outdoor space in the back, it's 38 yeses, zero noes, one abstention, and zero not voting for cause. I'm stepping up here since I need the height. <laughs> um, the, the fir we had uh, two items, and th they were unanimous. The first item was unanimous. The second was not. But uh, the resolution, w there, the resolution to, in item one is the there was a presentation made by the Durst organization on a proposal to connect the Astoria ferry line in Queens to the 90th Street terminal, which already obviously exists. This was joint with Parks and the Waterfront Committee. And the Durst organization is really trying to drum up support for this, and it, it's something that um, is a, like a five-minute crossing on the Astoria line, and it, was also, and it would also provide service for Roosevelt Island people. 
And I think there was, there was a concern in the committee about the fact that uh, while this was a good proposal, it made sense, but that there, a private group was sort of proposing it for its own purposes. And so after a lot of discussion, we basically asked, we, we put a resolution together which basically said not only, you know, we, we support the extension, but we also urge EDC that's really um, running this thing to require them the Durst organization to provide monetary contributions to support upgrades to ferry infrastructure at the East 90th Street landing, and um, and you know, and and also any other things that uh, they might be able to think of. But so that was that, that's our resolution, and it was uh, we we had an abs one abstention, our chair, and um, and you may want to comment on it. When I'm up here, but I know that there was concern expressed at the committee level for um, the idea, as you mentioned, that Durst is building a development over in Queens and that this ferry would be of significant benefit to them. And that's why people called, a number of people on the committee level called for some kind of subsidy, either for NYCHA residents who live in Queens right next to the dock and um, to come over here and, and vice versa. And also because the city subsidizes each ferry ride, it just didn't seem right. But again, I, I want to be neutral up here, so I'm sure there were other people. I know Lorraine Johnson is raising her hand down there and, and a number sure. of other people. OK, we'll, we'll get them. Lorraine? Uh, I'd like to know the idea to get this ferry to go to, to uh, across the river? Yes. Uh, downtown? Yes. So it's acceptable. It, it would go to Astoria, and then Roosevelt Island, and then Long Island City, yes. and then 34th Street. It's, it's yes. Acceptable for 90, 90th Street, correct. Right, right, near, right so where you, near where you live. Right. They, they updated it then. Well, they will. If they have to extend it, they haven't done it. That's the whole proposition. <laughs> They're trying to drum up support for doing it. But, but Okay, right. Right. Wait a second. Let me let me get uh, Tricia, who was one of our co-chairs, uh, uh, and this is a joint parks committee. I just wanted to uh, comment on this because I, I do feel very strongly about our ferry service and about connecting Roosevelt Island to the Upper East Side. Uh, I remember this very well as this came up outside of this proposal in 2018. We passed. This board, I think, unanimously passed a resolution calling for a ferry service to connect this long, uh, uh, um, Roosevelt Island to the Upper East Side. I, we, I honestly, very personally, I, I don't really have much thoughts about connecting to Astoria, but I have a lot of thoughts about connecting the two parts of our district together. And I think that providing any additional transportation options to that connect our two very distinct but collected communities is a good thing. So I, I do support the resolution and I just want to remind you that in the past we have supported this and I think that this does provide another mode of connection, particularly then you don't have to go down to 59th Street to get the tram or to get the F train. You can go up to 90th Street. So it really does connect different parts of our districts together and, and for that reason I'm going to stand and support this. Thank you. Lynn, Lynn you want to come in, I know. So, so the Roosevelt Island Committee and um, my, uh, the Roosevelt Island Residents Association have been advocating for this since they put in that um, ferry station. So we're 100% behind being connected to the Upper East Side. And we feel that it will be very beneficial because of its access to the Q train and, and some of the other access points. So we also request that people consider voting yes. Thank you. Uh, Rita. The other thing is the Durst organization is building affordable housing in the, the development where they That's are. That's correct. And the affordable housing is between 30 and 50 percent AMI. So that's fair. And a lot of people who will be in affordable housing will not have transportation to get to jobs in in Manhattan. So that's number one. Number two, the Durst organization is already rehabilitating the boiler systems in the NYCHA development, which is right there. Right there, yeah, that's right. It's part of their develop it's part of their work, yeah. And we add that to more. On that basis I think we should approve this. 
Okay. Other, yes, uh, Valerie. Well, the minutes are incorrect because I was, I am a member of the committee and it doesn't, I wasn't there and it doesn't show that I either was excused or not excused, but I was absent. So, okay. but my question to you is can we do, can we amend or maybe do the resolution and one of the reasons that we're supporting this is because the jurist organization no. that we're not asking for financial support or at least at this point because they are doing these other things because I think to Alita's point, we don't want to give a free ride to developers that we're going to support a uh, transportation system back and forth without them doing something for the good of the community. Well, we're already asking EDC to ask them to put some further financial contributions in. I, th I think, I think. Are we saying either, I mean, that's what's unclear, that we're supporting this whether or not that happens. I mean, yes. we're asking. Or asking EDC to do it. I mean, first of all, look. We don't know that it's going to happen. This is a question, and I, but I think the sentiment of the committee was that it's an important thing to have happen, and we'd like to get some, as I think Rita put it well, I mean, we, you know, to connect up these areas, and, and Lynn and others, and Tricia, and to connect up these areas are very important. And if we can get something out of them, that would be helpful. But I think, I think all of us say it just so happened they came before us to advocate it. If they hadn't, you know, if somebody else had come and said we want the ferry, we'd have said fine, fine. So we're taking, but since they were a private group and they will have some benefit from it, but a lot of people will also benefit, we're asking EDC to say, can, you know, can they do more? Can they contribute more? And hopefully they will. And they, they, they actually indicated that they'd be willing <laughs> to do some of that stuff. So I think it was, I think it was pretty, yes. Um, how does Cranesville about it, the Cranesville? Oh, there's, there's, I think they're supportive of it. I, think I don't they're, know. They're, they're, they, they, uh, I don't know I'm trying to remember they, if they, did they go before them? I don't know that oh. they've gone before that community board yet. We did receive a letter today um, from a neighborhood association in, in, in support of this. Okay. But okay. I don't know if the community well, we'll, board is on record as of yet. We'll, we'll look it up right now and see if Okay, we'll, we'll look it up. Yes, yes, just a second. You want to step? Craig wants to step down. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm, I just wanted to step down. Is this working? I guess not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alita. Um, so I just wanted to comment briefly. Um, I, I feel very strongly that the discussion sort of took a different turn than we anticipated because there was an article regarding subsidies and it was framed as this was something that the Durst organization was looking at. But I'm, I would like everyone to try to think about this from the perspective of if this were anyone bringing up the suggestion, and this is something that I've mentioned a couple of times even in past meetings of the Parks and Waterfront Committee when they were um, addressing any issues about the ferry. I had been asking in the past for an Astoria connection. Ferries work when you are able to cut travel times down and provide new linkages. So if Durst hadn't come in with the proposal, this proposal was still something that could stand on its own merits, and there probably wouldn't be the controversy that arose to some slight degree as a result of Durst being part of this. So I would just urge everyone to think about this as a transportation linkage that doesn't exist, and if the city is has a policy to support the New York City ferry system and to subsidize it to keep fares w w um, in parity with New York City transit fares, which is the current policy in place, I don't personally believe that we should be trying to, uh, trying to question the, issue, the, the, the Durst organization for trying to do something that may benefit them, but in, if outside of their participation would still be of great benefit to our community and to the New York City transportation network as a whole. So I just wanted to say that and thank you for your time as I step back up. Okay, any further comments? Yes, Peggy? Second, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Can we call a roll on this? Can I make one, one comment? I'm, I was so persuaded by Trisha and Lynn and seeing how interested Lorraine is and other one, everyone else's comments, and I'm changing my vote for anyone who's interested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't call you out of order for interrupting that, <laughs> since you're the chair. I appreciate that. Now I have to follow the rules, too. Well, okay, okay can we call the roll? Yep. <laughs> Avenson. Yes. 
Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartzog. Yes. Helpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Yes. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamort. Yes. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimamura. Yes. Spagnoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. <laughs> Teitelbaum. Yes. Teo. Yes. Thiever. Yes. Wald. Yes. Walsh. Warren. Yes. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Uh, Mason? Our state. While um, Billy's counting them up, on the last, on the voting reform, there were 37 yeses, zero noes, one abstention, and zero not voting for cause. All right, the, the next resolution is item three, planters and tree bed improvements to bike and pedestrian lanes along 2nd Avenue in the East 90s. This is a proposal that was a partnership between the office of council member Ben Kalos and the New York City Horticultural Society. And the proposal is to put in four temporary planters at four intersections between 89th and 96th Street. There are already some planters in certain intersections. This is meant to further enhance um, the corridor over there. These will be temporary in nature, so if there are any concerns about safety that arise or any other issues that, that arise, they can be removed. It was a unanimous resolution. Marco? Second. 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 All, all in favor? Any opposed? Call the roll. Avon Sean. Yes. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartsock. Yes. Helper. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Yes. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum? Later. Yes. Lamore. Yes. Mason. Down. I just wanted to hold everyone's attention. It was the last um, agenda item on our resolution. Actually, it was item four, excuse me. And there, this is a, a proposal by the New York City Department of Transportation to put in a 24-hour exclusive bus lane on Lexington Avenue between 96th and 60th Street and to um, change the parking regulations uh, along Lexington Avenue. It's a major proposal. They are going to be coming back to our Transportation Committee meeting in June, the first Wednesday of the month, so I just want to advise any, everyone <laughs> of this item because it's probably going to um, be <clears throat> a, 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 a quite the discussion. <laughs> You have the courtesy of going to the community groups that are we in that we asked, area? We asked them to do, we asked them. Okay, because this is beyond okay. the chart. That's all I'll say right now. <laughs> I wonder if you could also consider, and I don't, I'm not saying necessarily, of Second Avenue, not only is it already a total mess, but when we get the MTS with about 60 to 70 trucks a day going down Second Avenue, you can imagine how much worse it's going to be. I wonder if um, maybe Second Avenue could, could be considered also. Well, see, I don't know what they have in mind, Barbara, in terms of doing that. But if anyone wants a preview of the presentation, they did present it at our meeting this past month, and it is available on, on our website in the minutes. On right, the thank you, everyone. 
On the Durst Ferry issue, is 38 yeses, one abstention, zero noes. And on the, uh, on the planters, it's 39 yeses, zero noes. Okay, next. Um, housing, Barbara and Ed. Okay, we have uh, one item. Um, well, we had two presentations, one from uh, Oksana Miranova from the Community Service Society. We sent it around to the board members um, when she came to the committee. We've posted it on the website. Uh, this is one of the best reports, I don't know, I've seen. It was very good. It, yeah. This is really good. It's posted on the website. Um, for anybody trying to get a handle on rent regulations in the city and just the labyrinth of rules, statutes, regulations, all of that. It's a really nice job. Um, so it, please feel free to go on the website and check it out. Um, it was very informative. And we had Peter Harrison from the United uh, Housing Justice uh, for All Alliance who was up in Albany yesterday working on nine um, bills that are in front of uh, the legislature called rent regulation uh, generally. Um, they're laid out in the minutes for you. Um, Basically, we took it from, from what they presided us, and we had one resolution. Yeah, we also uh, want to thank Sarah Stern, who is uh, Liz Kruger's oh, yeah. housing specialist, was there too. I had asked her to come, and she really was up on all the legislation that was happening now. And I just want to, before we give you the resolutions, which are there, 100 years ago, not, not quite 100 years ago, I was a tenant member of the Rent Guidelines Board, and things have gotten much worse since then because of de vacancy fee control, and losing housing being taken off regulations and this community and we'll get you the numbers soon have probably more ha regulated apartments than almost any other part of the city and this community is always have had a lot of harassment because owners know under the present laws they can get tenants out and get almost any rent they want from the apartments so it's very important I think that you support all these resolutions to protect this community so we do have some sort of economically diverse community and people can stay here and, and then children can raise their families here the next generation yeah, just one quick point and from last night's meeting although it's not in front of us tonight um, and, uh, mr. Barnett came it was very nice for him to come um, someone raised the issue of harassment in our in our district and I think he said that he had not heard of anybody ever being harassed out of an apartment in our district. And I, I just want to say no, that. No, he hadn't had a claim against him. He hadn't had a claim against him. Okay. Okay. But, but, that is, but it has been something that has been brought up, just so the record is clear. We do. We have had people come and complain. He hasn't had one. So, yes, of course. Anyway. Okay, we can vote on putting all the resolutions together. Any we only had one. We only one. had one as a committee. Only right. one has a committee, but they, they, this involves all nine laws that people were up in Albany yesterday uh, lobbying for, and it'll be hopefully voted on very soon. But the, uh, Board 6 and Board 11, I think, and Board 7 all passed these resolutions approving it. Okay. Uh, Rita? Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. We don't have to. It's already on the floor because we approved it. Call the question. Okay, call the roll. Abenson. Yes. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think there's six more yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Strong yes. Freeland, yes. Hartzog. Yes. Helpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Yes. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamort. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. Yes. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Absolutely, yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimamura. Yes. Spagnoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Fever. Yes. Wald. Emphatic no. Walsh. Yes. Warren. Yes. Wiener. Yes. 
Zimmerman. Yes. Brown? And Tejo? Lorraine, did you were you here? Did you want uh, for the con for the discussion? Did you want Lorraine it, uh, to vote on the uh, um, the rent regulation, um, the resolution in the housing committee? That's what we're voting on. I know I saw you come in as we were voting. Yes. Yes. And for the new members, you should know that CB8 has a very large percentage. Of, se of the senior population here, and we're very concerned about affordable housing and their ability to age in place and stay in their homes, and also our continued interest in providing affordable housing for those who would like to be able to live in the community. Um, okay, uh, Council Member Kalos is here, so. He's having a long day. I saw him at 8.30 this morning. Good evening. Uh, I want to uh, start by uh, saying if uh, our, our newsletter this month is only 35 pages. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to, I apologize, we'll do more, I promise. Uh, uh, if you don't have a copy of the newsletter, if you raise your hand, Abby from my office will come around. She's been taking notes. She'll bring you a copy. Thank you. Uh, and I also want to welcome all of the uh, new members. In particular, I have a appointment that uh, he was on the board, he, he, he came off the board when we lost him from the district, and he somehow decided it was a good idea to come back to the board, so if you can join me in welcoming back Lowell Barton. And uh, when I first got elected, I worked with uh, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer on a resolution for teens on board, and we were able to pass a law in Albany to allow 16-year-olds to serve on the board. Interesting fact. Scott Schringer served on the board at 16. Uh, I won't comment on whether or not it was illegal, uh, but we do have a, a new member representing uh, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt High School. If you can join me in welcoming Jack Zimmerman. And I want to uh, note that I believe, Jack, you were with us on 91st Street on one occasion, is that correct? So on, on one occasion, uh, there are a number of the members of our board uh, who said that we needed to build supportive housing for formerly homeless families. And uh, we, we had, uh, I believe Rita was there, who lives literally across the street from the supportive housing. And uh, we, we had David, and uh, I'm sorry he isn't here tonight, but please say, I mentioned I said some nice things about him. And it's literally in his backyard, and Community Board 8 came out to say, yes, in my backyard, please build supportive housing. And uh, Jack was a student at Eastside Middle School, and he said, welcome. I look forward to going to middle school with these students and children who have been homeless and face such challenges, and it's very different than anywhere else we see in this city. So if we can give all of them a huge thank you. We, it's, it's nice weather outside, theoretically. It's supposed to be spring and, and warm, uh, and so we have a lot happening this month. Uh, we have Family Day at Carl Schurz Park. At, on the 18th, we have movie night at John Jay Park. Uh, Rebecca Seawright's husband said you should go there. It's going to be Incredibles 2. That was his joke, not mine. I, 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 I will steal. Uh, we're also co-sponsoring with Stanley Isaacs Neighborhood Center a free skate night at Stanley Isaacs Playground. And then we have a movie night at Carl Schurz Park. And that movie will be, where is Abby? It's, it's what, what movie is it? <laughs> it's uh, Mary Poppins. It is Mary Poppins. So I'll just get into the quick report. So some big things are happening. We cut the ribbon. I want to thank Alita for joining us on $15 million for a brand new Esplanade by, uh, by Rockefeller University, which will be maintained in perpetuity. Uh, also, I want to thank our uh, parks chairs, in particular, uh, Peggy Price and Susan Avery. Are they? There, there's one. Where's, where's Susan? Well, what do you call it? I'm hoping many of you will join us. Uh, 
we didn't get as much as we wanted. We wanted it to be open to the public 100% of the time, but we did get it to be open 22% of the time. And during the year, one third of the time, it's actually gonna be open for $10 drop in hours. So uh, I know that uh, we're still fighting for more for the community. I know that Alita and Trisha showed up at the franchises and I wanna thank our Congress member, Carol Maloney for leading on that. And as we try to get more money for the parks in our neighborhood, uh, in terms of where we are on fighting super talls, uh, particularly in this district, 249 East 62nd Street, uh, the city council will be voting tomorrow to reduce the height from 30, which is what city planning increased it to, down to 25 feet. Also, we got some very good news. We've been looking at the gerrymandered zoning lot, specifically the one that started at 180 East 88th Street, and uh, the city planning commission has agreed to come back with an answer this summer. Uh, we are trying to get open uh, affordable spaces with so many empty storefronts and we just opened uh, the first of its kind on the east side an affordable storefront with an organization called Chishama. Uh, another key thing is I'm concerned about the 15 billion dollars our city is spending on contracts uh, and I will be the new city council contracts chair that is after spending uh, a year and a half asking the city why we pay our construction workers less than they need to make to live in the affordable housing than our city was building. So we're building affordable housing for people making $199,000 a year while we were paying construction workers $15 an hour without insurance, without anything. Um, one thing I want to invite folks to, it seems like this meeting is going fast and I'm the only thing between you and the door. Uh, who here thinks that we need to clean up East 86th Street? So if you want to join me tonight, we're going to be experimenting to see if it works. We're going to be power washing East 86th Street tonight and tomorrow night. When you say we, you don't mean you. I'm actually going to be there power washing. Uh, I, I will roll up my sleeves. I will have the... Uh, Lexington Avenue at 9 o'clock. Yes, I will be there at Lexington Avenue at 9 o'clock. Are you going to be there with me? Okay, I will, I, will, I will grant you an exemption to leave early with me and we will, uh, we will power wash. We were concerned about the conflict between residents and the power washing because it's very commercial but it's also very residential. So if it works, we're going to keep rolling it out through the community. And so uh, I see some nodding from somebody who leads the East 72nd Street Neighborhood Association, so they may be visited next. Uh, but we're doing the pilot. We're rolling it out with Wildcat. Uh, how, how is Wildcat doing in terms of the cleaning? Do we have thumbs up? I see a thumbs up from Jordan. Uh, and we've actually done some patrols to make sure that they're doing, we're, yeah. It's working well because we're working with the East 86th Street Association and the funding that we got from New York City Green and your office to increase cleaning through Green Keepers. Yes. That's how it's working. The street yes. looks better. Yes. So we're going to keep cleaning, and I know my time was over because Alita was ready with the hook. I see, qu I, I see folks with their hands up. Uh, I will let Alita uh, call on people as they wish. Thank you. Judy. Yes, I want to thank you. We forgot St. Catherine's Park, the last of uh, Star Wars, the last of the Jedi, on Wednesday, the 29th of May. So thank you very much for sponsoring that movie. If, if, if anyone has it, we're going to do it on the 29th. It's a Wednesday night. Uh, and uh, what do you call it? We will have free foam light up lightsabers. They're about this big. Uh, we're hoping no one gets injured, uh, but uh, <laughs> if they do, it's for the force. It happens, and it will be celebrating May the 4th a little late. Does anyone else have lightsabers? Okay. I, I, I have, my kid has a lot of them, so if anyone needs, I have. If, you're, if your kid comes, I will, I will, I will uh, battle them in lightsabers. And I also want to thank our relatively new park chairs, Trisha and Barry, for all of the work you do to get more green space up here. Absolutely. Thank you. And there was one other hand. Rita. That homeless, that uh, affordable housing for homeless families looks like it's completed and there is no construction in front of it. Do you know when it's going to open? We call women in need and the developer every single uh, day. I will say that uh, we, we're trying to make sure it gets open. Uh, we just opened 28 units of affordable housing for people making $34,000 a year at 92nd and 2nd, uh, right across the street from your house. With is that, is that open yet? So it closed for people to apply in April. Uh, people will be hearing from a group called... Uh, 
I forgot the name of the nonprofit, but we're trying to work to speed up the lease-up process. We're also going to be getting a preschool in the building called Olive Bet. And if you want to just like swoon and look at one of the girls who's probably going to be like the next president of the United States of America, there was these like the cutest kids you'll ever see who helped us cut the ribbon there. So thank you for your help. You got it. And for the new members, I just want to point out that I think that we are lucky in this community to have both Councilmember Kalos and Councilmember Powers standing up and supporting us in so many of our fights. So thank you. You got it. Thank you. Um, I, ne I, I neglected to mention something. So as, um, as uh, Barbara Rudder is on her way up to talk about the health care um, potential system. I just want to mention, speaking of health care, that I think this is still being worked on, that Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney has gotten Donna Shalala to come to speak to Community Board 8 on vaccines on May 30th. We're still figuring out the time. I think it's 5 or 5.30. We'll let you know the location. But we're so concerned, and Congresswoman Maloney is so concerned about the need for vaccines and the spread of the measles epidemic that she arranged for Ms. Shalala, Congresswoman, to come up here and speak on vaccines, about vaccines, to the community board and anyone else who would like to join. And that's most likely to be at New York uh, Presbyterian Hospital, but we're still working out the details. It's on May 30th. Did I mention that? Okay, Barbara, take it away. Well, as, you've been hearing, let's as you've been hearing, we had a very successful panel discussion, um, including uh, Richard Godfrey, who is the Senate sponsor, uh, I'm sorry, the Assembly sponsor and the chair of the Health Committee on the, on the Assembly, as well as Gustavo Rivera, who's the Senate sponsor and, and, uh, and um, chair of the Health on the Senate side. Um, this, th this act that they're hoping to get passed within the next year or two will give health care to every single New Yorker, including Ben's construction workers that he talked about. It is heartbreaking that construction workers have no health care. Um, but it will be for everybody from children on all New Yorkers. I did write a lengthy um, write-up about it. I, we have a resolution that basically supports the council's resolution that was passed last year, but since then in addition of long-term care, which is exceptionally important. I have to tell you from personal experience, long-term care, if you get private insurance, is just very, very expensive and exclusive. And not only is expensive, I, I am lucky enough to give up some things so that I can have it. It keeps increasing all the time. And it's extremely scary, and a lot of people don't have it and really can ruin you. Um, this bill will be... Um, paid for, will evidently be, I mean, not evidently, but both the Kaiser and the, uh, Ellen, what's the other um, foundation, has said that it will be cheaper overall, um, paid for by um, an employee tax where the employer would pay 55% and um, the employee would pay um, the 45%, um, and will end up, even though the tax will be more, the overall will be much less for much more. Is there any questions, Alita? Yeah, De Debbie, question? Debbie Teitelbaum. Do you happen to know when it says that the employer will pay 55% the size of the company that would have that requirement? I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, I am taping some of the questions. There's a lot of questions that I, I can't answer yet. And what we had thought we would do, I talked to Alita about it, is we would get these questions together and um, I would write to Dick Hockfrey to make sure that it comes back again. And maybe we'll even have an email, Will, where you would say bring it into the community board and so on. Do you know, Ellen, whether it, there's a, a certain limit? I have to assume it's not for people of 10, you know, 10 employees. That's one of the questions we have to write to them because okay. it was, it was, it's, it's not clear which employers would be paying for it. Um, but right now, most of the employers that are paying for it now will be paying for it later. And I don't, and, and there's an exemption for a certain level, you know, if you have a certain number of employees, there's some exemption. But just keep in mind that this is a work in progress. And once this gets, once the framework gets passed, then 
all the negotiations will start with the major uh, stakeholders, and and then it will really be more formalized. They're working. What came up at the panel is they're working very hard with unions. Um, there's a couple of unions that right now aren't on board. Some of the private hospitals that are very high cost, they'll have to, they're going through negotiations and discussions with it and so on. Most of the unions are on board. They listed, it was just a couple that weren't on board. Any other questions? Yes. Peter? Uh, yeah, I, I regret I wasn't able to be at the event, as you know, because I think it's a wonderful event, and my heart fully supports it. I do have a concern up here about whether we're fully recognizing the cost, risk, downsides, and so on. Um, I guess I won't try to elaborate on that, but I think there's a lot to be understood and worked out before it's clear. Having said that, I'll be supporting it, but I do have concerns and reservations. I will just say that there have been studies after studies. I've been doing this for about four or five months now, and I get people sending me all sorts. The economics is very complicated. I, was, I spent about 10 minutes on one page, and I. I, but I got some dumbed down things. And um, they believe that this will save money overall is what everything that I have read so far. Paul? <laughs> so I, I guess I did have an opportunity to attend the, the oh, forum. And it, was, and it was great and I did appreciate you know the, the speakers that were there. Right. But I, I guess I do have some general concerns about the funding mechanisms in terms of I thought it was actually an 80-20 split where the employer was going to pay no, 80, said 55. 55. Okay, so that somewhere I read them, they need to update their website. But I, I get concerned on the finance not from the perspective of just small businesses, and I know the question's been brought up, is there's already a large burden on small businesses that are given to them through many different mechanisms. And I just, you know, we're already having challenges here in, in, on the Upper East Side and, and all over New York City. Um, so that's one concern I have. The second concern I have is the, the other piece of funding this proposal um, focuses on waivers of federal uh, of funds right. the federal government uses, and I guess that concerns me particularly given the current administration. Absolutely. Whether you like it or not like it, the fact of the matter is, is I would be concerned at the current administration or future administrations that might um, say, "Listen, we're not going to give you the waivers," which would then be, I think, a negative effect on uh, on us as New Yorkers to have to determine the, to, to make up the shortfall, which would then potentially be more taxes. Um, so that's the, that, that's one of the main concerns I have. Uh, two of the concerns I have: the taxes, the impact on small businesses, as well as um, you know what's going to happen if the feds decide that they don't want to give us a, a, a waiver. So, I mean, I, I understand and appreciate the challenges that we have as it pertains to uh, to, to healthcare in this country, mm -hmm. um, but I just don't necessarily think the idea of switching it from a private insurers and to the to the to the to the government um, controlling it is is necessarily going to be the solution that's going to solve the problem. To me, it's really more of an idea of let's sit down and let's have a conversation and figure out how we can lower the cost of health care. As someone who, you know, who's ha not had insurance and has insurance, um, again, I appreciate the need for, for trying to find a solution to ensure that all New York, res New York City residents are, are insured and can get, get access to quality, uh, to quality uh, health care. But I, I, I'm just concerned overall is that ultimately, no matter who's deciding who's going to pay for it, we're still dealing with the cost, the, the high cost of medical. I'm just going to answer, I, you brought up your first point was really two points, and one I, I didn't, I've never heard anybody ask. The first one is if we don't get funding in this current administration, we may not get funding um, from it, and then it won't start. I never asked the question of what if it starts in a future, um, you know, president or, you know, Congress or whatever doesn't give it, and that would be a question that we will ask. I think Ellen has a response as well. I have a response to that. So the current funded, the, the waiver programs are Medicaid, Child Health Supply, uh, it basically it's Medicaid. And, and Medicare Medicaid also would be well, rolled Medicare, in. Medicare is, would be one, sorry, Medicare would be one large advantage plan. Um, Medicare would be one large, essentially be one large advantage plan if, if, if those of you over 65 know what an advantage it's the private arm of the people can select in so we would just it would just become a medicare advantage a large medicare advantage plan 
one in the, sta in the state. The um, Medicaid, if the Medicaid waiver pro uh, program is not approved, th we're in a mess no matter what because we already have, we already have millions of people on, uh, on Medicaid in the state and that's still going to happen and more people would, would, would be going to the emergency rooms, more people would be taken care of for free in the hospitals. So we would be in deep trouble no matter what, because we already take care of, of people that don't have insurance. So, but so in Medicaid, what would we do with people right. that are on Medicaid so right this now? This way, we have a large insurance pool that everybody's in, and we have more of a chance to spread out the risk. And this is why even long-term care, even though it is expensive, it will, is not considered a greatly more, will not add much to the program. Because right now, people that tend to get long-term care tend to be older and therefore using the system more. Where if you spread it out that everybody has it, it makes it that much cheaper and that much uh, safer to go through. Sharon? Yeah. Um, I think, Robert, thank you very much, and, and Ellen, for your work on this. Um, I understood you to say that part of the um, long-term care component is uh, negotiating uh, rates with hospitals? No, 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 no. It's not. no. no. Okay. 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 Here is not hospitals. So be, it would be very similar, very similar, but even better than the Medicaid program right now. And what I think is was a positive thing was that there will be programs to make the home health care. It would be based more on a home health care rather than institution. It would okay. be the model. Because that's really what I wanted to emphasize. Because because a lot of the care can actually uh, be given and addressed at home, and oftentimes that that's cheaper than, for example, at a long-term care facility. Not only is that the emphasis, but what a positive that's added to this bill is the fact that they will be. Um, paying the aides better, giving more support to the aides, okay. and uh, so that it would be a, a profession that more people would want to go into. Barbara Chalky. Yeah, I, I just want to say, and I, I I'm not, haven't worked on this recently, but I remember when Dick Gottfried first introduced it, I think 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and I think what's key, because someone asked a question about small employees, mm -hmm. employers, it's still, it's still less. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. It's not you. They, they have minds of their own. It is, it's talking. It's, it's important that even the people who are self-employed, they'll have to pay the whole thing themselves. It'll still be less costly to them than it is at the present time. And, and the waiver is, somebody was concerned about, I think once you get the waiver, it's a, it's a waiver. You don't have to get it renewed, I don't think, every every president that comes in. And it's going to take, I think Dick said, two to three years. So hopefully we'll have a different administration that will give us the waiver. If, if I may just tell one um, anecdote that came up. There was somebody that asked, I'm self-employed, I have breast cancer. Will I have to pay? And the answer is, if you're self-employed, you pay 100%. She right now pays $12,000. Uh, she couldn't get Obamacare because her doctors weren't taking it. And she said she has very good insurance so that she only has a $4,000, I'm stressing only, has a $4,000 deductible. So she is paying $16,000. They said, unless you're making millions of dollars, you wouldn't be paying anything close to the $16,000, even as a self-employed person. So, um, this is what the forum was about. Any other questions? Other questions? No. Okay. Sure. I mean, it seems to me there's a lot of questions that aren't answered here at this point. I, I, you know, it's and I don't know if they're going to be answered right away. It is not something that's being voted on next year. They will, there is still negotiation. Things have changed. There was a list of some additions. Most of them are not much. The big one was long-term care. So if I presented this last year, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have been talking about the long-term care portion of it. It seems premature to vote on it now. I'm sorry, Chuck, excuse me. 
it seems premature to vote on it now with so many if we we're going to have it seems premature to vote on it now we're going to have a lot of questions no they're not they're not voting on it at all. But you said they're not voting on it. Well, the assembly did. The Senate is that they need seven more senators to come on board. So they're down by seven, which is much less than it was last year when we presented. Well, is it possible maybe to postpone like the cable? It is, and table it till. Yeah, I mean, I have my own opinion, so I, I don't know even if the questions are answered if I don't change my mind. <laughs> it seems though there are a lot of questions, and maybe I don't know. This is my first meeting, but if it's appropriate for us to just postpone until we're able to get some of our questions answered, and, and getting those questions answered, maybe we can give you a list that you can follow up, or you know, whoever else can follow up to get answers to. What I would suggest, and maybe we could even do this as an email blast. I don't know. I'll talk to Elite about it. Is if you would send questions to the board, I have a series of them. I have a couple of my own, and I've heard from people. Um, one question that came up is pre-existing conditions going to be an issue? Absolutely not. You know, that, that, uh, absolutely not. Um, will all doctors take the insurance? Is one of the questions I thought would be asked. It was asked right before. Uh, the answer is there's no guarantee. Just like I have a lot of doctors that are not taking Medicare or, or any insurance at all. They, what is said is there's more likely that there'll be a better buy-in with this plan because number one, the doctors will be getting paid more. It's built into the bill that there will be better payment and there will be none of the work. My doctors complain about all of the back office work and the, the computer work that they have to do. Um, and there will be that much less al along with it. Um, another number that I just want to say that savings would also come because right now private insurance, they are allowed to have something like an 18% um, 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 administrative fees and advertising fees, this should be somewhere between two and some predict as high as five percent. So that gives you that much more savings. Well, but I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm sensing that not everyone work, yeah. is sure that they could. Okay, get so should we table vote. it? Well, why don't we take a vote on how many people would like to table it and then we could see what to do. If you could just raise your hands if you'd like to table it. Okay. Okay, so that we'll seems like a, a maybe majority. Come back next month or the month after. Or when there's when there's more information and maybe there's a way to get more there information. There is. Dick Gottfried will be able, yeah, and some things he won't be able to answer. But between Gustavo Rivera, they've been very open of please come back to them and everything. So then maybe someone could come here and be able to answer questions, or you could talk to them. You know what? I, I'm I'm thinking that maybe it would help if. Everyone who has questions emails them to Barbara. She emails them to the state representatives who are working on this and see what answers we get back. And then we could circulate them among the board and then see how everyone, what every, if everyone's ready to vote after that or if we need more time. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we are up to parks and waterfront. Trisha Barry. Trisha, oh, there you are. You are hiding. one resolution but it's actually not unanimous so we just want to explain it um, uh, mass had come to us asking for support on a bill that is actually is actually being co-sponsored uh, by our assemblywoman it has to do with the alienation of parkland as well as definitions and reporting on alienation of parkland and unfortunately I was just looking I haven't scrolled down to the full bottom of this but I'm not sure if we've actually included the language of the legislation but I'm happy to talk to you about it. It's two, It's a very short piece of legislation. It basically just defines parkland clearly, including part, including playgrounds. And it says, it mandates that um, should an entity, should a development take over parkland or you determine that it needs to be used for a different purpose other than parks and open space, then that project must replace that land um, in, the, in the general community, which is a good thing, I, I personally. I think it's a good thing. We, uh, this kind of relates to what we've been seeing just north of our district um, uh, with Lowe and uh, the group uh, and uh, what's the park that's right outside of our district? Mark's, 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 Mark's Brothers. Thank Mark's you. Mark's Brothers, Mark's Brothers Park. Park. Playground. Uh, that's uh, what the resolution was. But Paul, since you were our, uh, our no, if you'd want to comment well, so on it. I'd say, 
of saying. I understand. So, uh, there's one issue I wanted to bring up in terms of changing the. Apologies, we'll, we'll clarify yeah, that. Sure. So, the only reason I have changed was because at the time I think I had been on officially a board member for about three hours. So, I was coming to the committee with the intention of just, you know, observing and understanding, and so I wasn't ready to make a vote. So, I've since gone home and done my research and looked it over. And so, for me, I actually. You know, I don't know if we'll be able to. We can amend minutes. Yes, right, right now, now is the time. Well, yeah, I mean, my, so my, my I would, I, I would since uh, uh, amend my uh, earlier abstention to a yes vote because I, I think it's a good vote. So unanimous. Marco, can you call the question, please? Sorry. 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 All in favor, call the question. Aye. Aye. Call the roll, please. Aiden Shaw. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Ashley. Yes. yes. Barry. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. <laughs> yes. Chalky. Yes. Gangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hardstock. Yes. <coughs> Halpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. King. Yes. Kirshenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamorte. Yes. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Marshall. Yes. Patch. Yes. Hope Marshall. Yes. Hopper. Yes. Price. Yes. Brother. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider? Yes. Shimamura? Yes. Spanuletti? Yes. Squire? Strong Yes. Tamayo? Yes. Tidalbaum? Yes. Tejo? Yes. Fever? Yes. Walls? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Warren? Yes. Wiener? Yes. Zimmerman? Yes. Well, they're tabulating on the housing. We have 39 yeses. This is on the approval of the state rent regulation legislation. 39 yeses and two noes. For our youth education libraries, we have Cece and Dory instead of Debbie and Peter, so go to it, guys. Hello. So we, okay, so Cece and I hosted a panel on civics um, in the classroom, and it was very successful. We had a representative from Generation Citizen. We had a representative from the Civic Center, and basically our discussion mostly came down to this big problem, which is that there's a lack of education on civics in high school, middle school, and elementary schools in New York. And so our general conclusion was that it was the school's responsibility to educate students to be responsible citizens capable of participating in our government. Um, so that is why we, pa we passed this resolution, which was pa passed unanimously. Um, but we would like to ex exclude B after further discussion, the, com the committee decided that the, the section B about the regents we would like to exclude from the resolution. Um, and then stepping away, our reasons for that were the problematic ped pedagogy of teaching to the test and the mm -hmm. general sort of tre trend leaving um, and the depopularization of regents in general. But we still think that schools should teach civics. So we are very much still interested in seeing A passed. So we'll be voting on a as the resolution rather than A and B. Someone want to call the question? Would we call the question. Second. Right. Call the roll. All in favor? Aye. Call the roll. Any Aye. opposed? Abenshun. <laughs> call the roll. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartside. Helper. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. <coughs> King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamort. Yes. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. No. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Hopper. <coughs> yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimamura. Yes. Spangoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Tetelbaum. Yes. Tejo. No. Fever. Yes. Uh, Wald. Yes. Walsh. Warren. Yes. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. On the parks and waterfront, 39 yeses, zero noes. While they're figuring it out, let's have landmarks. Jane, David. Just getting used to um, our new paper.
paperless approach. But we had a, um, uh, we had um, three applications at our meeting on Monday night at um, Marymount College. The first one was for the former David Rockefeller House. This resolution was divided into two parts. This is 146 East 65th Street. The first part was the proposed greenhouse, which was a unanimous approval for the greenhouse. Thank you, Chuck. All in favor? Any opposed? Call the roll. Aben Chum. Yes. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Jangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartsog. Yes. Helford. Cass. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Lamort. Yes. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. Yes. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Chimamora. Spagnoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Yes. Fever. Wald. Yes. Walsh. Warren. Yes. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Thank you. Um, part B of the application was about a planter at the rear of the greenhouse. It's um, very hard to describe, but I think I did describe it if you read the resolution. And there is an image which shows a drawing of the planter with the trees, the 15 foot high holly trees. The planter is almost 13 feet off the ground. The trees above would be another 15 feet. And we just felt it was just too high and totally out of context and not fair to the neighbors, to any neighbors, to have this huge screen that they would face um, looking at the back of this property. So it was a unanimous disapproval. I was at the meeting and we were concerned about the height as the, I believe, two neighbors spoke earlier. So if you're wondering or didn't have time to fully read the resolution, we addressed their concerns. Thank you. Uh, Marco. Hold the question. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Call the roll. Havenson. Yes. Aronson. Yes. 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 Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Spartan. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartzog. Yes. Helper. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Mort. Yes. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. Yes. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimamura. Yes. Spagnoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Yes. Thiever. Wald. Yes. Walsh. Warren. Yes. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. <clears throat> so many <laughs> Seem to all be unanimous. Can I speak? Thank you. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Not so many unanimous, but they're different. Two of them are applications, and the other one is a different kind of approval. So items two and three are for non distinguished buildings, modern buildings that happen to be in the historic districts. And uh, the first one is for window replacement, consistent with the master plan for this very undistinguished building. The second one is for the minimal expansion, a small expansion of the penthouse, perfectly consistent with the uh, modernist aesthetic and uh, hardly uh, visibly changed from the street. These are both unanimous approvals. I would suggest that we take them as unanimous approvals together. Marco? I have to do I can do that. Uh, 
for the two resolutions. I'm voting for Carlson. For the two resolutions, the three or four. The same one. I'm sorry, I have two us and three. Yeah, I have my firm resolution. So we have a resolution. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Call the roll. Avon Shaw. Yes. Aaron Sam. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Choppy. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartsaw. Yes. Helford. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamort. Yes. Mason. Yes. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. Yes. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Yeah. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimomura. Yes. Benioletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Yes. Beaver. Walt. Yes. yes. Walsh. <coughs> Warren. Not voting yes for cause. On two. Yes on and two. Yes on two. Not voting for cause on three. Yes on two. Not voting for cause on three. Okay. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Uh, Morris, um, abstain. Morris, abstain. I'm sorry, Morris. <laughs> I want to thank David for um, suggesting we take two and three together. Number four was a little bit different. It was really just a public hearing. It was not a formal application that came to us from the LPC, but it was to support individual landmark designation for the Colonial Dames House on East 71st Street. It was a unanimous resolution. Barry. Did you have a question? Go ahead. Why is it treated differently? Is that the one that missed us in the first instance? Or? No, it hasn't been. Um, the hearing at the Landmarks Commission was postponed a couple of times, and we wanted to have a formal hearing, and we did have a representative of the Board of Governors of the Dames, as well as friends who, I think it's in the beginning part, that friends actually d did the first request for an evaluation on this. So I think the question's been called. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Call the roll. Abenson. Yes. Aronson. Yes. Ashby. Yes. Barron. Yes. Barton. Yes. Boris. Yes. Brown. Yes. Camp. Yes. Chalky. Yes. Dangor. Yes. Freeland. Yes. Hartzog. Yes. Helpern. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Johnson. Yes. King. Yes. Kirschenbaum. Later. Yes. Lamort. Yes. Mason. Morris. Yes. Newman. Yes. Partial. Yes. Patch. Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimomura. Yes. Spangoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Yes. Fever. Wald. Yes. Uh, Warren. Yes. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Do you have a question, Tricia? The fever's not here, I, just, I was out of the room for the first vote. Can I go down as a yes, please? Sure. Well, when you say first vote, which one do you mean specifically? No, I thought we took the first, the very first vote for landmarks was... It was just the approval of the house, right. of, of the change, of adding the greenhouse, and then there was a second vote to disapprove the trees. I, I am in support of both of those resolutions as they as Okay, they so are. the approval and the disapproval. Yes, thank you. Okay. Can, um, can you add this to that? Thank you. <coughs> okay, so on the youth and education, it was 35 yeses and two noes. That's on the civics education. For landmarks, items two and three, the ones that David spoke about, for the first one, it's 37 yeses, zero no, zero not voting for cause, and one abstention. On the second one, it's 36 yeses, zero noes, one not voting for cause, and one abstention. And the revision um, to capture the other vote is, Trisha's vote is 38 yeses on part A for the greenhouse, and 38 yeses to disapprove the trees on the second part. Okay, thank you. Is that one more? I think it's all unanimous as well for, yes, 39 yeses, zero noes on the landmarks for the Colonial Dames building. Okay, so we have Lorraine Brown and Rebecca to talk about the new Census Task Force.
So we had our first meeting of the Census Task Force on April 25th where we had a presentation from Jolie Golden, a partnership specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau. She gave us a great rundown of job opportunities, the timeline, new initiatives the Census is taking on. Spoiler alert, it's digital, which is huge because you're going to be able to do fill out your Census form online, on an app on your phone, over the phone. It's going to be in 12, 18 different languages? Yes, I forget off the top of my head, but... Um, 12, there we go. So the census is really stepping up their game and it was a great presentation. It starts off really strong at the task force. Then we also had Fareen Griffith from the New York Counts 2020 Coalition speak to us about possibly joining their coalition, all of their efforts to get an accurate count, working with community-based organizations, partners of all levels from elected officials all the way down to grassroots organizations, community boards like ourselves. A few community boards are already passing resolutions to join New York Counts. At the task force meeting, we didn't get a chance to take a vote on our resolution, but you'll see we have one included that we'll be voting on at our next meeting on May 30th, where hopefully we'll be joining New York Counts 2020. We'll have some information at that meeting for everyone, which talks about the people that are in the coalition, what they're doing, their efforts, like I said, to get the most accurate count possible. We also discussed putting out a petition in support of the New York City Council allocating additional budgetary funds matching what the New York State budget put in. They put in $20 million on April 1st, but that's not enough. The New York Council Coalition is asking for more money, and we as the community board, we at the task force, we would also like to support that ask and put a petition out there to our constituents here in the district where people can say, yes, we do need more money. We need to count some at-risk populations. And so so, you know, with your support, we'll be putting that up online and we'll ask Will to send that out to everyone. And I think, did I cover it all? Did I miss anything? Very good, Rebecca. Thank you. In addition to the above, we are proposing to put on a job fair, a census job fair. And um, I think the district office is going to reach out to Stanley Isaacs to have that job fair there. Hopefully it will be in the first two weeks of June. And um, I, think, I think that should cover it. And we need your support. We are subject to losing two congressional seats if the count is not accurate. So please um, come support us and we look forward to seeing you at our next meeting. Thank you for your attention. Questions, Barbara? Yeah, two questions, just comments. And I will support it tonight because it's important and you have in it about not doing the citizenship question. Mm -hmm. But if there's a citizenship question in the census, I could not do anything to encourage people to fill it out because if I was undocumented or I had anybody living in my apartment that was undocumented, I would not want to encourage them to fill it out because I don't trust the present administration not to go after them. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yes. Will? Oh, I don't believe that. Uh, we'll, let, let, we'll speak. You had a chance. Uh, I want to respond to, to Barbara's uh, comment. That is an issue, and um, it begs the question, what happens? Do we stop the survey? Do we, since it is a government piece of property, if we hand it in, are they going to reach out to these people? So it's, it's really a problem. Right now, they have two sets of surveys, one with the citizenship question and one without. So after the Supreme Court's decision, then they will be distributed accordingly. But it is really a problem. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I took part of the 2010 census and the trainings very extensive. And one of the things they, they emphasize, the Census Bureau is completely independent of every other government bureau. As far as it's known, it's never been abused. Also, the, the questions don't need to be answered. So if you don't want to answer the question, don't answer it. That's something Jolie Golden did review at the meeting. Yes. Trisha. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, I, I work uh, or I, I work specifically with Julie Menon in, in another capacity, and, and she had said that, that, that they actually still accept the census with up to three questions unanswered. So if in the case where the, the, the citizenship question is, is on 
the census that that she's been telling people as the as the commissioner for this or as the director for this uh, for New York City that you can still leave it blank as Will had said, um, and and your census will, information will still be will still be received. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, with this current administration, we do not know what they're going to do, and we need. Hold on, let me, let me get Craig, because he just hopped up. He was hiding behind you. I'm sorry, Chuck. So. I'm hiding behind because I was standing there. So. <laughs> He's called Remember That. So I just wanted to report, I have some work colleagues who actually had a meeting recently with the census director who confirmed that if you do not answer a question, it's not as if they will discard the survey. And I think that is different from what was reported at our meeting. So that is new information, and if that is the case, that's actually obviously very good news. Yes. So I just wanted to inform everyone of that. And then I was telling Lorraine earlier that there are potential efforts that are taking place um, th that may be generated to ascend have a mass boycott of that question. That's yes. something that is obviously not being encouraged, but that's something that also I is potentially going to take place. So there may be remedies against the question if it, if it does end up being on there. All right, yep. I think it would be a big mistake to discourage people to fill out a census because as we talked about before, as we talked about before, there's so much riding on it. It's not just representation, it's millions and millions of dollars. And if a lot of people, billions, sorry. Pretty soon you're talking about real money. Um, but I, but I, yeah, and, and so it's really important. And I think if there's an undercount, and we, particularly in New York here, in New York City, that's a big problem. And I think if we get an undercount, it's going to really hurt us badly. Absolutely. Did they mention, how, how, what is the outreach going to be in the public schools to teach kids how to do the census? They're actually going to be launching a program where it teaches children and gives them um, like paperwork and fun things to take home that educates them and their parents on why they should fill the census out. And they're going to really target um, first generation families because a lot of times they'll rely on their children that speak English to be the brokers and bring back the trusted knowledge. So the census is going to be launching a public campaign that includes a school component to specifically target children and their parents to push the census being filled out. Yes. Other questions? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So um, I just want to say something to everyone. Uh, Here, hold on. So I just wanted to mention that uh, my final job interview with Gail, that was one of the questions that I posed to her about that particular question and what was her opinion on it and how she was going to deal with it. And I was very pleased with her answer and her answer was that yes, you don't have to answer that question and be penalized for it. They're not going to throw away your, 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 your senses because of it. So you don't have to answer that question is one. And two, she already is uh, um, ready with all of the not-for-profits in the community who are encouraging people to, yes, fill out that census because it is very, very important that we get those congressional seats, as you mentioned, and the money that we need for these communities, especially underserved communities. So uh, she's already rallying the troops uh, insofar as people who in the grassroots and not-for-profits uh, to bring out uh, everyone to fill out those census. So she re really she reassured me, and I got the job. But <laughs> um, So I just wanted to mention that to everyone. And that's something New York Counts 2020 is actually focusing on. They want to be, they want to partner with um, CVs, CBOs, to become that trusted voice in the community. So if you have a question about your immigration status, if you don't feel comfortable, you'll go to your local nonprofit. You'll go to your local community group, which is a trusted place for you. And they'll be empowered, hopefully, as a member of New York Counts, if they are, to then answer those questions and work with you to get you through the process so we can get all the monies possible. Really? Yep. So if it's the case that if you, an, if you skip three questions, your form won't count. And if it's also the case that people can fill this in digitally, I'm wondering, is there a way to sort of, uh, you know, prompt people when they hit submit that, hey, you haven't, you know, you've skipped three questions. Can you please answer one of them or something so that we're not having people submit it and it just goes out there and doesn't get counted? Because I'm worried that a lot, you're going to end up having a lot of 
submissions not be counted because of some number of questions being skipped, even though I think many of us agree, I certainly agree, that that census question is you know, terrible. The citizenship question is terrible and it's not well intended, but is there a way to prompt people on the digital form? They didn't show us the count. digital form. They haven't launched that yet. They haven't shared that, so I'm not sure how they're going to confirm right before you click submit. So I'm not sure. I don't have an answer. That's something better suited for the New York Census office. So we can check back on yeah, that moment, Jolie. I'd, I'd be interested in pursuing from our position in this. I wish we could push the federal government to overhaul their digital census platform. I just don't know if we got that power, even if we all work together and push super hard. But not, we'll not check having, with Jolie and we'll see what they have not having for power their hasn't digital application. We'll check with them. Will? If you can't submit, if you skip a single question? Any questions, it just says, I won't, I won't let you submit it. I would be concerned that they would start logging it down to force you to answer every question. Yeah, I mean, that'd be bad. We obviously don't want that, but we also don't want people to skip three questions and then not be counted at all. That's our other issue here, so. And it's yeah. tough where they haven't released the platform, like I said, so we have no way to answer, to verify, to know what their check on the system is before hitting submit. Well. <laughs> So it's, it's a very easy form to fill. So it's only 10 questions. It takes a couple of minutes to fill. Now, what, as in 2010, after the process of the online, will they send people to knock on doors? Yes, yes. yes. The, not, the old school. Yeah, the old school knock on the door is going to be their last way for anyone that has not filled out the census online, on their phone, over the phone. That will be the last. Uh, personnel they deploy to make that contact. I would strongly recommend it. I think you said that that we recruit. When I did it in 2010, most of us were unemployed actors. I wasn't one, but an unemployed actor that was a fully employed community board member. But to in, to engage the undocumented community, so they go out and knock on their neighbors' doors, and they can get great encouragement of people to, you know, they could obviously not answer that question, but submit the form. They, they will have enumerators that will go door to door to uh, conduct and complete the survey. Door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You to open the door, Marco, yes, but uh, you know, individual choice. Can't force you. Yep. They didn't share the forms with us, so I can't give an answer on that one. They didn't share the forms with us. They didn't. Is there a way? I'm sorry, repeat your question. When people are filling it out, they know they can see a few questions explaining what their sender is going to be. When we knock on doors, we explain it. Um, I don't know what the online form is. Did you, did you have the option to refuse to, to do the first <coughs> to opt out? And what happens then is you're refused and you get a letter from the mayor of de Blasio saying, just to inform you that you opted out of the census. So there are people that will refuse to answer the census regardless of what you tell them. Anyone else? Where are Sorry. They're saying that this is the census that is going to be mostly online. There are thousands and thousands of people that don't have access to putting things online. How are you going to know the difference? The knock on that person's door that didn't fill it out. So each household is going to be sent a mailing that includes a code for online that is intimate to that individual household. So the census will have a way to know whether or not you went online and used that code. And then they're going to target the list down for who they need to know to go and knock for. And that is something we did flag at the task force that are many households that aren't online. That's why they're still going to have the paper. You can t uh, dial in and do it over the phone also. So there are other ways because it's not perfect. I totally agree. There are going to be people disenfranchised. Marco. I'm confused. If the if this is so independent, how does the mayor's office get a list of who's not filling out the form? Uh, I don't have an answer for that. I didn't know that happened until Will just mentioned it. So at 301 East 87th Street, 17A is what they would say. I assume they wouldn't give your name. Uh, but I have an amount. Yeah. But do they know it's your name? And but they know which apartment to go to. They can probably figure out. Yeah, that's right. So it's not independent. No, no. It's not safer. 
Is that essentially your question? Yeah, I honestly, I just learned that that happened just now, so I have no answer for that. I don't want to speak out of turn on that one, but I trust you. Information is confidential until someone makes it not confidential, sadly. So, yep. Barry, you had a question? There's no question to call, but I appreciate it. Anything else? We'll lock it down. Anything else? <laughs> yeah, next month we'll have a resolution. Mm -hmm. there, how do we know that this information is not going to be hacked in some way that negatively affects the Democrats? Yeah, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. Yeah, it's unfortunately an unknown. I mean, I heard today on NPR, China just launched another like malware attack. So unfortunately, there's no way to know. The census said they're putting as many checks in place to make sure it's safe. Obviously, we know it's not foolproof, but yeah. Maybe I'll just do it right now. Do it old school. Uh, yep. There are four ways to do it. You can choose anyone you want. They're not going to force you to do either or. So, any other questions? No? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. In 2090, they can see what you answered. Okay. All right. That's a, a long time. I don't, yeah, I don't know how many are here. Thank you. And thank you. And we can, you, you, you have to, yeah, you have to do it off, offline or, or find a board member to off ask. Off. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to have some, is there any new old business? Valerie. It's impossible to do a distribution as the minutes come in and then do a full, I mean, to give all this its due, we should really have a longer opportunity than 11.27 a.m. today. I, I agree. But it's, can you repeat the question? Oh, the question from Valerie was there was a lot, there were a lot of committee reports and an awful lot of resolutions this evening. And is it possible to put them online one by one as the minutes come in from the committees with the resolution so that people could start reading them sufficiently in advance of and the meeting? And that is happening as they come in from the committee co chairs, as they're approved by Alita, they go online immediately. Um, so you can always check the website. I know it's not a really perfect system. The, I mean, I guess this is a question for you guys. How many emails are too many emails from me? The, the issue is that the committee reports come in differently. Landmarks meets on Monday. They generally get the resolutions in on Tuesday. We have the full board on Wednesday. Some other committees really send them in very last minute. Some send them in way earlier. So it's a rolling process, and it's still a work in progress, but it's much better than it used to be. So in the, in the case of, like, what's up? Oh, no. I'm liking this idea. So how about if we include in the weekly news roundup a little section of newest minutes that have been approved? Does everybody like that idea? Okay. Yes. Why don't you just put it on the homepage, which one has just came in? That way you know from the homepage. I'll admit that the homepage is a little scary for me to, to try to like uh, to change. Is that okay? Yeah. Any other old business? Okay, for new business, it seems that the evil, for, well, I won't say because I'm neutral, but the, the idea of increasing or lifting the cap on FAR is in Albany again. So since we passed a resolution last year opposing an, an increase in FAR or removal of the cap on FAR, and so I'm asking if we could have a similar or the same resolution but change the names um, this year because it's up there in Albany again, which I just found out about this morning, actually. Okay. Call the roll, please. Sure. What is the resolution? It is the road the vote is to you make it clear specifically the cap on residential FAR of twelve S of twelve. Is that I thought it was all. Well, I thought they wanted to eliminate all the the whole there is no state cap on all FAR. Then you can build thirty three FAR in Hudson Yards. Yeah. Okay, so to eliminate the residential <laughs> cap of F, uh, the residential FAR cap of twelve in New York City. 
for the new people, it's the way the zoning works is that there's a limit on what you could build, which is determined by the relationship between the floor space and the land space, the amount, the space of the lot, and that's how density is limited. Um, the mayor has been pushing for removal of the cap so that more apartments could be put up and the area and the city could become denser is is how it's been phrased and how it's been working and every year it's been up in Albany to get to lift the cap so that the buildings can become denser and have more units for the amount of land that there is the lot size it stands FAR stands for floor area ratio so it's the relationship between this the amount of the floor and the amount of the area of the lot size the lot Yes, yes, so it's a motion, so is the resolution to disapprove, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a resolution, thank you, because I haven't worked, I, just this morning, a resolution to approve, um, a resolution to oppose lifting the cap on the floor area ratio of 12 in New York City. And with the exact same wording as last year, yes. changing the names. Changing the names and the dates. And the dates. And potentially the bill numbers as well. Okay, call the roll, Rebecca, and thank right. you. Abenshaw? Yes. Aronson? Yes. Ashby? Yes. Barrett? Yes. Barton? Yes. Brown? Yes. Camp? Yes. Chalky? Yes. Dangor? Yes. Freeland? Yes. Hartsock? Yes. Halpern? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Johnson? Yes. King? Yes. Kirschenbaum? Later? Yes. Lamort? Yes. yes. Mason? Yes. Morris? Yes. Newman? Yes. Partial? Yes. Patch? Yes. Pope Marshall. Yes. Popper. Yes. Price. Yes. Rudder. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Shimamura. Yes. Spagnoletti. Yes. Squire. Strong Shinazaki. Yes. Tamayo. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. Tejo. Top. S. Walt. No. Walsh. <laughs> Warren. <laughs> Warren. No. Okay. Wiener. Yes. Zimmerman. Okay. And Tejo for the pass. No. Okay. And Boris. Boris. Oh, I'm sorry. We we had sorry. We got you out. I apologize. Okay. Yes. Oh, I thought you had to do Okay. Just you and I. Yeah, we are. We are at our next and last and most private moment. So I need to ask everyone who is not a full board member if you would leave the auditorium, please. That includes all the camera people. All the camera people, and thank you for, for working with us.